Welcome, guys, gals, ghouls, Wapham crew, and new listeners. Secure your tin full hats, buckle down tight, and hold on loosely as we soar over the rocky tops of the La Platas on a rocky mountain high, get sucked into the vortex of the Four Corners, and settle down snugly at mile marker 420 in colorful Colorado. It is Saturday, February 18th. Sunday, February 19th, for those of you across the pond and beyond, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, and welcome to We Are Paradox Media's Late Night in the Rockies. I'm your host, Tessa TNT, and we are broadcasting live from the Mile High Clubhouse tonight. I'm so glad and grateful that you guys could join us this evening, and I hope you guys are staying warm. We were just discussing uh, before the show how cold it's been this year, and it's been cold from California to even Florida. It's been so frigid. I'm ready for spring. When I was looking at next month's calendar, I was like, spring is coming, but yes, not too soon. So if you're listening to us live right now, you may be listening to us on Spreaker.com. You may also be listening to us on KPNL Radio, which you can find on KPNL Radio at KPNL-DB.com. You may also find us on eTalk Radio, which you can find on eTalk.tv forward slash radio. If you want to listen to us in your free time, whether you're working, working it, or working out, make sure you look us up under We Are Paradox Media at Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio. We're also live on Facebook right now and Twitch. Um, CastBox, Tumblr, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podcast Chaser, and Podvine. If you don't mind... Go ahead and mosey on over to our YouTube channel, We Are Paradox Media. Please subscribe, like any video that you've watched or listened to, and definitely leave us any comments, whether good or bad, yay or nay, and also as far as any guests that you'd like us to have on any future shows. So I have a treat for all of my guys and gals out there. This evening, we will be talking to and getting to know... Eric Morse, a.k.a. the author William Patson, who wrote the Camp Crystal Lake novel series for Berkeley Books, published in 1993 through 1994. These books include the novels Mother's Day, Jason's Curse, The Carnival, and Road Trip. The fifth Camp Crystal Lake novel, The Mask of Jason Voorhees, which the web published for his fans, um, in 2014 he published The Traveler, a Conflict of Interest, which was a science fiction, and Psychotic State, the novel, which was a horror splatterpunk, through Linkville Press. In 2018, he started his own publishing house, WCP Enterprises Publishing, and reprinted Psychotic State, the novel, and The Traveler. He also has published two novels by Christopher Highland, The Witch and the Prince and The Path Never Taken, through WCP Enterprises. He is currently writing a six-part anthology titled Symphony of Death. As Eric Morris, he was mentioned in the second printing of the book Crystal Lake Memories by Peter Brake. Also, he worked as an executive consultant on an independent film adaptation of his novel Friday the 13th, Mother's Day. He worked as executive consultant and screenwriter on an independent horror anthology film titled the Horror Seasons. He also worked with screenwriter Matt Mosley on the script for the slasher film Sparrow. Currently, he works with co-hosts Christopher Hyland and Mary Madcox, aka Nurse Hatcheton, the podcast Full Spectrum Horror. He also has his own podcast as well, An Awakening of Horror, and he was also the executive consultant on the film in Derek Young's film Midnight Matinee Psycho. He plays the role of a reporter at the beginning of the film. He is also credited as associated producer, contributing writer, and unit director on that film as well. He will be bringing back his reporter character in Derek Young's film Psychotic State. He will also be playing a part in Derek Young's next film, Josie. Welcome! Alright! Well, uh, well, uh, a little correction on the biography. 
uh, the thing is that, um, uh, the thing is, I'm no longer doing, uh, uh, full spectrum for anymore. I am doing a new podcast called, called Blue Cast Young Podcast. And I'm doing and that, I'm doing that uh, one, uh, by myself. With, of course, With of course you know, Mary Madcox uh, has, has nursed on the to do the intro. intro. So that's, so uh, that's, uh, that's one, that's one little thing that's happened. happened. Yeah, we definitely uh, need to get that fixed for next time, but... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But, but yeah, so far. But anyway, also, 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 also doing, still doing, uh, what the theater. So definitely, so definitely you you're going to have to go check that, that out on the video. You know, you know, bring, you know, bring, bring Bobby, Bobby and Snoopy over, over and where's the tarnation from? <laughs> yeah, actually, um, we go for cheap Tuesdays here, so it's like half price on movies. And I took the kids to see um, the one about the little AI girl. Oh man, oh, I can't remember. Oh yeah, 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 Megan. Yes, Megan, Megan, and oh my gosh, they were doing good for a while, and then all of a sudden Floyd was wrapping his arms around my arm and then Lily was scooting down in her chair and I'm like are you doing okay over there and she's like I'm just feeling a little tired and yeah they were both freaked out um and it freaks me out with AI and how fast it's moving and everything I don't know oh yeah, oh, yeah. very intriguing um so what did you think about that movie oh I love oh, it, I love it. Uh, the, uh, the thing, the thing I really, really liked about, about it was the PG-rated film, film, and, and um, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a, lot a lot of fun. Supposedly, Supposedly uh, this, uh, this movie is going to be coming out with the R-rated, R-rated version of it. of it. Really? Like it yeah. wasn't yeah. scary enough already? I know. I know. <laughs> Like, the way uh, she uh, did that, like, little dance move, and then she flipped off the wall, and then she grabbed that blade off of the paper cutter and went after the guy that ran the place. I don't know. That was creepy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bit of is always good. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, so, anyways you, know, you know, definitely you know, you know, have your kid now check out Blood Cast Theater, 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 theater because uh, this month, this I'm, month showing I'm showing... Two uh, werewolf uh, film. And just and remember, as I always say to everyone else, else, that, that uh, uh, what you do uh, is you go and you get them a nice big old uh, bowl of chicken nuggets with uh, with ranch dressing and let them chug that down. And when they get to the scary parts, the fireworks hit. Because they're going to be sitting there going, yeah! <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, luckily they didn't get sick. And <laughs> we had our, our candies and we had some popcorn and, and sodas and everything. But yeah, they were quite scared. Lily loved it. Um, but Floyd, you know, I keep making references to it and he's like, no, no, no. I'm like, hey, we're going to go watch it again today. He's like, no, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm like, come on. Where's your sense of adventure? <laughs> yeah, I, lo- I loved uh, Megan. It was it was a really good uh, film. Um, yeah, so so what type of horror films do you like there, uh, Tessa? Uh, what kind of horror films do I not like? I like them all, and um, I've been caretaking since November, and this girl and I, like, I'm Tessa, she's Tassie, and we both are not morning people, we both love the horror genre and and everything that goes along with it, and just recently she got um, the whole collection of um, 
Oh my goodness, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's that's the thing. I mean, I love a good anthology. That's the good stuff right there. And so I was like, Hey, have you uh, have you started watching that yet? And she's like, mm, No, because I'm still trying to finish Beetlejuice. So she's got the uh, Beetlejuice okay. cartoon sort of thing going on. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, she... I mean, you know, nothing better than the Crypt Keeper. Hello, kitties. <laughs> yes, I love I love the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> and uh, you know, I re I remember the old uh, Amicus uh, Tales from the Crypt and uh, Vault of Horror and all those, you know. I mean, that's the thing. I've pretty much uh, watched every horror anthology. You know, it's kind of one of my favorite uh, subgenres is anthologies, and that's why I actually started uh, Symphony of Death. You know, um, the thing was, originally, Symphony of Death was going to be a sequel to an anthology film that I got involved with uh, in 2005 called The Horror Seasons, which was directed by a very wonderful uh, director named Sean Buffington. And uh, the reason why I got involved in that was one of my fans from the Camp Crystal Lake novel, uh, you know, novels, uh, Greg Russell Titterington, he had a dream that he really wanted to work with me. So he brought me a treatment, a basic treatment called, uh, well, he called it Room for Rent. And what I did is I wrote a, wrote a script, original script from that. And it turned, we changed it to The Darkest Secret. And the thing was that when I was writing, I was having trouble with it because Greg's, um, Greg's, uh, you know, his treatment was only about a quarter of a page long and it really didn't, uh, strike with me. You know, it's basically, okay, this guy, uh, rents a room from uh from an uh lady at you know at her house and uh he sees all these ghosts and stuff and it you know and he ends up uh being killed by one of the ghosts and it's like no not good enough and i told him i said you know he wanted it to be under 10 minutes and i said nope can't do that. I don't write that way. You can't make a good, solid story with, uh, you know, character development in ten minutes. I said, I'm yeah, especially when fifteen, right? Especially when you go through something that's paranormal like that, it feels like forever. Yeah. So how can you write it in such a short sequence? Like, doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But he had said that he'd done it before. He'd given the exact same treatment to another person, and they wrote a script and that, and he sent me the uh, short film that he did on that, and I'm going, why, why are you having me uh, do it anyways? Because you already have it. And he goes, well, I want to see what you can do with it. And I'm going, okay. <laughs> well, then I'm going to change it. So the thing was, I was trying to figure out how to uh, how to change this story. And, you know, he was in a rush. He had these ones who, who were originally going to do the short film. And they were rushing and stuff. And things fell apart with that because they wanted, they said that what they were going to do was they were going to change my script without consulting me yeah and it was like uh no way so anyways what i did is i ended up i watched a couple of films and they inspired me i watched angel heart and i watched jacob's ladder 
And what I did is I changed the story so that what it was was it was about a man who was getting away from his past but his past was following him in the uh, form of his dead brother. Who oh was my goodness. Him. And he goes and he goes to this, uh, you know, this house where he's going to rent a room from this lady named uh, Mama Alice Diablo. And no red flags there. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't know that her name was Diablo at the end. But um, the thing is that what ended up happening is he starts seeing these uh, these ones. It's Halloween night. So, of course, the veil is uh, down. And he goes, he, you know, she asks him to open the door and give out candy. And there's this... Um, greaser at the door and he's half of his face is messed up and he grabs him and he says uh, he he warns him you know and drops him he said you know he says be you know you're in danger and drops him and runs off and you know he can smell you know the the character can smell the rot. Mm -hmm. And then he goes up, he's he's all he's all disheveled from from the experience and he finds a woman in the shower in his room. And she's got cut wrists and she's holding it out to him and blood's coming down from her wrists and she she goes, you know, Come and join me. We'll have fun. And stuff. And he just goes running out of the bathroom, hits the wall. And the the lady that he's renting the room for, oh, my God, you know, what's wrong? You know, his name's uh, Gareth Freeman. And so anyways, what ends up happening is later on, he sees his brother and he start he talks to his dead brother and he's he's thinking that he's going to freak out and he goes and he tries to find mama alice and he walks into her room and all of a sudden he's in this white room that's empty except that it has handprints all over the walls bloody handprints and stuff and Mama Alice is there, and she has changed into an old hag. And the uh, spirits that he's seen, the the greaser, the, the suicide girl, and his brother are standing there. And he finds out that he's being judged. And he finds out that he's actually dead, and Weird. that he's being uh, he's being judged on his sins, because the thing was that he he pushed his brother. Brother was was um, um, he he had he, he mental had mental problems, problems, and what he and did, what he did um, is the. Um, he, he pushed, he, he him, pushed to him to where he, where he committed, committed suicide. suicide. And what he, and what he know didn't know is that, is he, that he had, had um, um, you know, he had become, he had become uh, uh, so, depressed so depressed because he lost, he lost his, his job. His job. That he ended, that he up, ended up and, goes and, goes and hangs himself, and he doesn't, and he remember, doesn't it. remember it. So anyways, so anyways he found he guilty of, of, um, of his sin, of his sin and, and the, uh, the uh, ghosts come, ghosts come, come, after, come him. after him. And then he ends, and then up, he ends up, he, 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 wakes, he wakes up in bed. bed. But then, but then the at the end of the end bed... Of the bed the hag, the comes, hag up, comes up, and the other and ones, the other are, ones on the are on the side of the bed, and they, the bed and they pull them down. 
and that's where, and that's it, where it, it ends. You know, it pans, you know, it pans out, out of the room and, and it closes the door. The door. Well, that kind of reminds me of uh, what my favorite scary movie has been ever since I was a kid was Pet Cemetery, And, um, hold on, let me make sure I'm not muted. Yep, I'm muted. And, uh, yeah, I was. And the part, okay, so let me rephrase that or repeat myself, which I hate to do. But um, my favorite movie as a kid was Pet Cemetery, And um, I remember that part where... He goes down the path and he goes to the cemetery and all this other stuff and then he wakes up in his bed and he thinks it's just a dream. But in the end, it's not because, um, remember how he wakes up and his feet are all muddy and it's on the sheets and he's like, holy shit, that really happened. Yeah, I love, yeah, I love, I love the, uh, Mary, the Lambert, Mary Lambert uh, uh, adaptation of it. I don't, I don't, I didn't like the remake. <laughs> The what? The remake. The of remake of Harry. See, I ha I'm with you on that, and I believe I watched it, but um, it was to the point where it wasn't the same. Like, I don't know. I hate remakes, but I think it's good for like future generations that didn't get to watch the original or didn't quite get it. For them, maybe that's good, but for me, it just wasn't the same. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So, any so see anyway, we were going to um, um, the horror, the horror season. season. What ended, what up, ended happening up happening is Sean, is Sean Buffington. He loved he that, loved that, that short, film, short film. And he decided, and he decided to make it a feature. feature. He decided, he decided to, make to make it into, it into an, an anthology. So, so he, he, you know, him you know, and a couple of other writers wrote, wrote more stories, stories, and they and they shot a film, a film uh, um, for like for like fifteen thousand dollars, and and um, um, put it out as, put a, it out as a feature. And the thing and the was, thing was that, that it, you know, I thought, okay, thought, okay well, it would be equal, so, equal, I, so I started writing treatments for other stories, other stories and, and went on, on and, he and, decided, and he decided, uh, uh no, we want, want to do another anthology because, because we had a hell of a time, uh, with the uh, other segment that we did. You know, he had, you know, he had, he had, he had with trouble with actors and stuff, and stuff and had trouble with writers, writers and, that. and that. You know, you know. What was, what what was, what was interesting was that, was that I did a monologue, monologue in one of the, of the other, other stories. stories. It was, it was, it was, it was for a vampire character. And and that was actually that was actually the story of the story of the multiple. It was. It was. It was. It was funny as hell. As hell. It was one. It was one called Blood Thirst. You'd have to. You'd have to see it. Band it's band. Band. But, called. But. Uh, um. Did you say it's called Love Birds? Or no, Birds? No. 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 Blood Thirst. Blood Thirst. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the it, it's story, a story of a girl's uh, first night, first night as a as vampire. A vampire. And, and we find, we find in the end, in the end she realizes, she realizes that, that she doesn't want to be a vampire. A vampire. She doesn't want to live, like, live this. like this. So, so she ends up, up uh, uh, going on, going on to the top of the building, of the building and turns sunrise. So, so anyway, so, anyways, so I, wrote I wrote all the treatments. treatments and Sean said, and said, oh, no, 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 no. So, so for, a few years, for a few years, I kept going to going different filmmakers and saying, saying, you know, do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? But, uh, but uh, most, filmmakers, most filmmakers, they wanted to do, do, uh, um, do like slasher, do like slasher films, films at that time. At that time. And it's, and like, it's like, no, I don't want to do it with me. 
And so, and so I decided, okay, okay well, well, I had heard, I heard, heard that, that uh, a fellow, a fellow horror, horror host was doing, was doing her own anthology for a comic. For a comic. He, was doing a he was doing a comic called Forgotten Tales. Tale. So I offered, so I offered her, her those, those, you know, a couple of stories, stories that, I had that I had written for... Uh, Four seasons, four seasons two, two. and, and um, she didn't want she didn't them. want them and she was and she was doing her own and film, 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 film at the time based, based on, on her, her writing. So so that just kind of went away as the way of things. And so, and so what ended what up happening is I just put all those uh, uh, stories to the side. To the side. Well, the, well the, 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 the treatments, I should say. say. And, and uh, uh, went, went on. on. And what ended, and what ended up happening, happening with my co-host on, on uh, 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 Blood Bass Radio, Bass Radio at the time, time. asked yeah, yeah, ask me to do the... the um, um, Adaptation, adaptation of his screenplay that he was, he was making a film called Psychotic State. So, so I did. I did. I wrote, I wrote uh, Psychotic State the novel, and and after, after that was finished, I was inspired to continue, to continue writing, writing books, but I didn't, but I didn't want, want to do an entire novel. novel. So I thought. So I thought. Okay. Well, you know. What what I what what I found. You know, in my you know, in my writing, own writing, is that a is lot, that of, a lot famous of these famous authors. authors some of some, some of their, some of their most interesting, interesting stories, stories are actually are actually in their, in their short story, story collection. I mean, you look at Stephen uh, King. 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 I mean, you've got. I mean, the you've Lang got the Langoliers, Night Flyer, just just a whole a whole bunch, bunch of them. Of them. And, then of and then of course, and then of course, Clive Barker with the Book of Blood. Of Blood. You know his you know, his, his four four, four, four volume, volume of Blood, of Blood series. series. You know. You know, and, and so. so I just, you I know, just, you know, and of course, you know, my mentor, Harlan Ellison. Harlan Ellison he only wrote, he only wrote four novels, novels, but he, but he wrote, wrote over a thousand, a thousand short stories. stories. So, so I thought, I thought okay, okay, well, I wanted, to, I wanted, to, I wanted to try this, this out. out. Because you know, because, when, you when, you know when you're doing a uh, book anthology, uh, you can do different, do different styles for and, and and it doesn't get it doesn't boring get boring like when you're writing, writing a, 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 a full novel because you're stuck because you're stuck in one story, one story for months and months, months, months. And, and like, it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm interested in it. So, so I, I started the, the um, uh, uh, the symphony, the of, symphony death. of death, and I came, and I came up with a wraparound story about, about a cursed, cursed symphony. symphony. Well, a cursed, well, a cursed symphony. symphony. Where the, where the thing is that, is that the composer, composer that, 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 that wrote it, that the symphony, that the symphony killed, killed him and he killed his family as he was, as he was writing. And, and uh, so, um, so, um, the thing is, the thing that, is like, that like 30 years later, later uh, the horror uh, rock, rock, rock a guy named, a guy named um, um, Danny Dark, Danny Dark uh, 2K. Uh, 2K. Um, um, he, he's he, kind he's of kind of done of on, on, on uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne and, and um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, 
uh, Alice Cooper. Uh, Alice Cooper. Died. Died. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so, anyway, he has taken has a taken challenge, a challenge that he that is he going is to perform going to perform this symphony. This symphony. Uh, the thing is, uh, the thing is, anyone who has tried to do it in the past has died. Has died. You've had you've like, had like two bands, two bands that died horribly. You know, one you of know, one of them, their leader went, went and them all, them, all them all up, and the other and one, the other one, uh, the lead singer uh, set, set, set his band set on fire. <laughs> as, as, as a, a um, um, sacrifice, sacrifice to Satan, to Satan. and and uh, uh, the the um, his his his, uh, his uh, agent, uh, agent his assistant, his assistant goes and kills goes and kills herself after trying after to trying kill to kill him, him going mad going mad because he got. Her finger, her finger cut, cut on the symphony. on the symphony. I think I remember seeing something like that. Yeah, yeah, paper cut. Paper cut. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's, 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 one, it's of one of the stories. But anyways, but anyways, I do all the do all the uh, uh, log stories, log stories that are related to the symphony, to the symphony and, and expand, expand the, the uh, mythology that, that are created. created. And then I and have then a I have a main story, story which, which really isn't, really isn't usually usually associated with um, um, the symphony the of symphony death. Of but death, but it's, it's when the thing is the thing is that when Sammy starts performing, performing the symphony, the symphony, what he does what he, he does hears, is he hears you know, he, he you starts, know, he, he starts um, um, he, 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 he falls he, into, he another, falls person's into another person's life, and he lives a and story. he lives a story, and so and so each each each, uh, each uh, segment of the segment of the symphony of death. Of death there's a main there's a main story, story that goes that through, goes through and, it's all and it's all different one. Like in the like first in the first one, I have, I have my, my short story, short story Robert Pablo as the main story. story. Which is kind which of is a kind of a comic one about the, about the uh, eccentric person, person and their friend who is a demon from, demon hell. from hell. Then I, my best then friend. I, then I, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, rewrite, rewrite of the dark, it's dark it's secret, secret and expanded, and expanded upon, upon that story. story. And then, and I, then have I have. Another one, another one is which is called, called um, um, Blood in the Blood Rose, in the Rose, which is uh, out of prostitute who has lost, who has lost the will to live, to live and meets up, up with a vampire and gives her the, the, the um, um, option, option of either dying, dying, dying or becoming, or becoming what, he what he is. is. And currently, and currently I'm, I'm working, working on the prologue. prologue for the, fifth for the fifth book, book uh, this, uh, this prologue, prologue story, story takes place, place exclusively, exclusively in, hell. in hell, and it's about, and it's about an, agreement an agreement that is that is in, you know, it's an important, you know, it's an important agreement that, that um, um, has to deal has with, to deal the, with the symphony of death, of death. because it's because an it's an agreement between, between heaven, heaven, death, death and hell. And hell. And that the and thing, that is, the thing that is, is that is God is going, going to allow, to allow uh, uh, hell, hell to, to have, have um, innocent, innocent human souls. souls. That there's, that there's the harvest, the harvest that, happens that happens periodically. periodically. You know, to, you know, to, to, to even out the even book. Out the book. Mm -hmm. And so, and so you know, like you know, like the bubonic, bubonic plague. plague. That's one. That's of the one harvest. of the harvest. And so, and so the symphony, the symphony of, death of death is is the, the latest latest uh, harvest. Uh, harvest. 
you know, the way for, you know, the way for, uh, for the devil to the get, devil stole. get stole. I know it's, um, I know it's kind of creepy as far as all that goes and my past experience with, and people deny it. They're like, no, the devil doesn't show himself to you, but I know that was the devil. Like, even though as a kid, I felt it. Um, and I also saw his minions and stuff, but as far as procuring these souls and, and at different levels, etc., like it's insane. Um, oh, yeah. what the oh, is, yeah. is going on. Um, well, it really blows I, my well, mind. I, I, I explain, I explain why, why, uh, the uh, devil, the devil needs, needs damn soul. Damn soul. And the thing and is, the thing is that, he that he and his and demons, demons feed, feed off of the, off of the energy. energy. And, and people, people in, hell, in hell, the reason why, the reason they're, why tortured they're tortured is because, is because tra you know, traumatic, you know, traumatic energy, energy is stronger, is stronger uh, than just, uh, than regular, just regular energy. energy. So, so, what the devil, what the does, devil does is he puts these souls, these souls through, through incredible trauma to increase, to the, increase power the power that they can, that feed, they can on. feed on. So, so yeah, well, what, yeah, ended, well, up what ended up happening in, um, in, um, in this story, in this story is, is the, the, the time when the he time makes when he this... this um, um, Agreement, agreement is right is after, right after uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus is, crucified. is crucified, and that God made, God's made the, the, uh, the, uh, the pledge, the with, pledge humanity with humanity that if that they, if they, they raise the rules that they, that they are allowed to the heaven. Of heaven. But what ends, but what up, ends happening up happening is that. Is that what had happened, what had is, happened since, is since, since the, uh, the uh, great, great flood, flood, God is just God is sending, just sending souls, souls, to, souls hell. to hell. And so and hell, so has, hell added has added a bountiful, a bountiful amount, there, amount there, and their population, and their population is, risen is risen and stuff. And stuff. And what's and happened, what's happened is, is because, because of Jesus, Jesus uh, hell is uh, going to start, start starving. starving. The, the, the demons in hell are, 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 are not going to be enough gold. And God and has, God has setting been setting down, down you know, only, you know, only, only real sinners have been allowed, been allowed to be to sent, to, be sent hell. to hell. And of course, and of course you know, those souls, souls that, that uh, uh, Lucifer, Lucifer has gotten the flood, the flood They've worn, They've out. worn out, and you know, and, because, you know because, because the soul kind of get kind of get death. another death, and he had and made, he had a, made deal a deal with death, death, death that he could that he could pick up the souls, the souls after, after he was finished, finished with, them. with them and take them and take them darkness. darkness. But the thing but is, the thing is that, that, um, <laughs> you know, now. You know, now there's not that There's many, not that many coming, in. coming in. They're suffering. They're suffering. So the thing is, the thing that, is that what ends up happening, happening is Lucifer goes, goes to, to death, death and asks and him asks to moderate, him moderate him and, him and heaven, heaven because, because you know, he, he sent out sent his out watcher, his demons, watcher demons, demons to try and, to try and get, a, get a get a, a um, you know, to get, you know, a, meeting to get a meeting with God, with God and, and the and angels, the will, angels not will not even talk to, talk his, to people. his people. So it so takes, it takes um, um, death, who, death is who is older than God, than God and who is going, and going to eventually reap both, reap God, both God and Lucifer, and Lucifer to come in to come and, in say, and okay, say, okay, we, we need talk to about talk this. about this. And so, and so this is the story, is the story about, story that, about that. How, how, how these these three three, three groups, three groups come, together, come together. You know, you know and death his, and his reapers, reapers and and, and uh, the Lucifer, Lucifer and his and demons, and, demons and, and God and, God and, and his archangels. 
So it's going to be so a it's real, be a real powerful, powerful story. story. And the main, and the main story, story in that in that book is one is about, one about a man um, who um, before you continue there um, because I do have myself muted over here and um, people in the chat room are saying that it sounds like <clears throat> you're coming through as three. Um, so maybe could you turn down your volume just a little bit? Maybe that'll help. Oh, I have. Oh, I I've have. Been, I've been muted over here uh, for a while, and then I turned off different channels and stuff. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like, I don't get it because you're only on one channel. You're on A2. I'm on B1. So I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on with that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm to the point to the right point now, right where, I now where I can barely hear you. Hear you. Yeah, and maybe like um, try the headphones again because I did uh, turn stuff down, but I know how that was like complicated in the first place too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, I was having. I was having issues, issues with it because, with it because the, uh, the uh, reverberation, reverberation was coming, through, coming there. through there. Yeah, and I tried to turn off like the channels on the output, and um, she says it's still echoing. So that's weird. Okay, can, okay, you, hear can you hear me now? I can hear you. Oh, good. Oh, good. So I'm just All hoping right. that's All better because right. I want people to be able to listen and not, not have that echo. But Yeah. Yeah. Seems to be Seems working, to be fine, working for, fine for, for, me, now. for me now. Is it better than before? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. And I can turn it down more still, but... Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. Fine. This is fine. Okay. All right. All righty. So, anyway... So, anyway, yeah. yeah. The, the uh, uh, main story, main story in that, in that one, is that one is called Anniversary. anniversary. And it's about, and it's about a... a uh, Archaeologist. archaeologist, well, well semi-retired semi -retired ar 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 archaeologist, archaeologist, who ends, who up, ends up his, his girlfriend, girlfriend goes and betrays, goes and betrays them. them, and so and the so thing the is thing is that, that she's going she's to get going married. To get married and, and uh, uh, tells him tells about, him three, about days three, out, out, three days three before, days before the, the uh, uh, wedding. Wedding. So what he so does what he is he captures, captures her, her and her, and her uh, fiance, uh, fiance. Kills the fiance. Kills the fiance. But what but ends, what up, ends happening up happening is she, is she dies, dies of a heart, of a attack. heart attack. Oh shit. Like, so he so is he denied, is denied his, revenge, his revenge, but the thing, but the is, thing that is that he was, he was uh, doing, doing research, research into, into this, this uh, book, uh, book that supposedly, that supposedly had, had the had power, power to, to bring back, bring the, back dead. the dead. So what so ends, what up, ends happening up happening is he goes, is and, he goes and he tracks down this book. And resurrects her from hell. And what ends up happening is that she thinks, oh, well, you've brought me back. Oh, God, things are going to change in all this. And it's like, no. He brought her back so back that he, so could, that kill he her. could kill her. And what ends, and up, what happening ends up happening at the, at the end, end is that... Is that uh, uh, he decides that he's, said, going, he's going, to going to bring her back, bring her back yearly, yearly and kill <laughs> her kill over, her over, and, over, and, over and, and over and over again as an anniversary present. Yay! Yeah, that's that one. And then, then I'll have uh, the, final, the final, book, final book, which will have, a, have prologue a prologue about, about how... how Danny, Danny gets, gets the, uh, the uh, symphony. symphony, and then and I'll then have, I'll a, have final a final story, story which, is, which about is about 
a vampire who confesses, confesses to, his friends to his friends that he's, that a, vampire. he's a vampire. You know, he's, so a, he's college a college professor, professor that does, that a, does night, a night, night thing, thing on, on uh, uh, vampire, vampire legend. legend. But it turns but out it turns he's out the real, he's vampire. real vampire. And in fact, and in he, fact is he is also Shaq the Ripper. Jack the Ripper. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I don't know if you can hear me, but um, did you hear that story about this guy? And he's like, I'm pretty sure my great grandfather or my great great grandfather was Jack the Ripper and he showed all the evidence, etc. Do you think Yeah, I know, I know, I know very, well. very well. Was it I've really had his, had his so grandpa? Few times. Was it real? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, well, actually he, he, he thinks, he thinks that, his, that his, uh, his, his, his his ancestor, ancestor was, was uh, Jack, uh, the Ripper, Jack the Ripper, but actually, but actually his, ancestor his ancestor is H.H. Holmes, H. H. Holmes, Holmes, who had you know who, had, who was, was the one that did the murder palette. Yeah, the crazy when, ass hotel where there's tracks, shoots for bodies and everything. Yeah, yeah. But what he but what suspects, he suspects is, that is that he came, he came to, to England, England to, uh, to uh, you know, you know, to try to, to, try to get, get um, um, you know, you know, learn learn learn, learn, how, learn to how to do uh, uh, killing, killing more. more you know, you know, easily, easily. Yes, like out in the gutters or the alleys or whatever, where people who report it are easily, like you know, yeah, shaken yeah. off. Yeah. Plus, yeah, you plus wouldn't you think, wouldn't that, think that, that uh, you know, H.H. You know, Holmes, Holmes would do this. But the thing but the is thing that is they that still, they still think, think that H.H. Holmes, Holmes escaped, escaped uh, uh, you know, his, you know, his execution, execution and that and he, actually he actually went to, went Russia, to Russia and, and killed, killed people, people there, there, too. too. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, there was, because a, whole there was a whole bunch of, of uh, uh, murders, murders there. there. That, that looked like, looked like Jack the Ripper Jack the style, style murders. murders. So I can't remember, was it Germany or Russia that did that awake study where they put several people in a chamber and kept them awake for so long on methamphetamines and stuff and in the dark and like basically without sound and everything? Is that the same or was that Germany? Uh, uh, I'm trying to I'm remember. Trying to remember. I think I no, think, it was, no, it, it, was, was Russia. it was Russia. That's what I thought. Yeah, it was pretty sad. And then at the end, there was like two or three survivors, and they're like, "Please, like, put us back in the dark. Please make it silent again," because um, they had their own thing going on. It was very crazy. Yeah, I recall yeah, that, that one. one. Very Real life horror stories. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, reality, yep. reality is, sometimes is sometimes scarier, scarier than, than uh, reality. Uh, reality. I mean, I reality, mean reality is scarier, is scarier than, than fiction. I totally agree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, people yeah. scare me more than ghosts and the paranormal and everything else. I'm like, people to me are scarier, especially these days after the whole oh, COVID God. lockdown God. and everything. It's like, holy shit, where'd all these Karens come from? And... <laughs> It's oh, I'm just, oh, I'm just, I'm just, just worried, about worried about these woke, these woke ones. ones. They're driving, they're driving they're nuts. They're nuts. I mean, I mean, I did, mean you, did, did you hear did about, you hear about the GK, GK Rowling's thing and stuff? And stuff? Um, I think so, but please refresh my memory. Okay, okay well, the well, thing the is, thing is that, that uh, JK, JK Rowling, Rowling simply, simply made, made a comment. A comment on Twitter, on Twitter, and she said, and she said that, that um, um, trans, women trans women are different, are different from, from biological, biological women. women. 
which is obvious. Which is obvious. But, but uh, the, uh, thing the thing is, is that the, the trans, trans community, community has, has gone, gone nuts, nuts, and they want to destroy, destroy J.K. Rowling for, for, for this, for this simple, simple statement. statement. And the thing and is... The thing is that they tried to, to uh, uh, ruin, ruin Hogwarts, Hogwarts legacy. legacy, and the thing and is, the thing all is, they all did they was did they made was the, they the uh, 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 game, uh, more, game popular more popular <laughs> by doing by it. Doing it. And, and what ended, what up, ended happening up happening is recently, recently, one of these one woke of these ones. ones uh, a uh, teenage, teenage woke, woke kid, kid went and said a bunch of things, things about K.K. Rowling, K.K. Rowling and tried and to, say to say that someone that should someone kill should her kill and her stuff, stuff and all these, and all these this, this different foul, different foul stuff. stuff. And what ended, and what up, ended happening up happening is J.K. Went, went and contacted him, him and... and Said, have said, fun, have with, fun my with my solicitor. And so, and so all, of a, all sudden, of a sudden, this kid this is kid going, is oh, going, oh, I'm so I'm sorry, so sorry. This this J.K. Rowling, and, Rowling and, 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 and all this. And, all this, and it's and like, it's give, like me give me a break. break. You know, and then, you know, of, and course, then of course, you know, you know an, another, an, fun, another fun Situation. Did situation. you hear about you the, hear Velma, about the thing? Velma thing? Uh, yeah, the new Velma on HBO. I've heard good things. Some people are like, "No, I don't like it," and other people are like, "They love it." Yeah, uh, yeah that, uh, one that one is the, is most, the hated. most hated. I mean, even, I mean, the, even woke the woke people, people are, hating, are that. hating that. And the Scooby and the Doo, Doo fans, fans are going nuts, nuts and saying, and saying how, horrible. "How horrible!" <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, because there's no there's Scooby no Doo there. there. Uh, uh, Mindy, Mindy uh, what's, uh, her what's her name? Went, went and changed, changed Velma, Velma into an, into Indian, an girl. Indian girl. She yeah, turned exactly into, a, into black a black man, black man named, named Norville, Norville, and then turned, and then turned Fred, Fred into, an, into idiot an idiot who has a who small. Has a small Member. Member. Poor Fred. I always suspected that. That's why he always wore a large ascot. Besides the fact that his father had an ascot factory. I don't know. You know, it's kind of like driving a big truck. A big ascot is an, another uh, version of yeah. trying yeah. to show you have a bigger member than you really do. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, so anyways yeah. yeah. Yeah, the thing yeah, the is thing that is now, that now uh, uh, Mindy, Mindy has gotten, has gotten uh, the, uh, green, the light green light for season, season two, two, and the fans, and the are, fans going are going nuts, nuts over, over that, that, not liking, not liking that. that. Oh. Of course, that's, of course the, same that's the same thing like what like Warner, what Warner did, did with uh, Rings, uh, of Rings of Power. Of Power. Even though Even everyone, though was, everyone hating was hating on that, on that they, they, they're, going they're going to make a, to make season, a season, two season two in a couple, in a years. couple years. And what's funny, and what's is, funny they is they went and, went and said, oh said, no, this oh, is no, not this going, is going, not to, be going to be woke or anything, or anything anymore. anymore. But the thing, but is, the thing is, is that this next, this next time... time they're going to have going all, to have women, all directors. women directors. They're going, going to have no, no male, directors male directors in it. In it. Which is weird. Which is weird. <laughs> but anyway. But anyway. Anywho, um, we do have to go to our first music break. And it's been weird because everybody keeps saying we're echoing, even though you're on one channel, we're on another one. Um, but yeah, I've noticed yeah, I've noticed it's been it's been 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 yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on with that. And there's like um, a five, there's second, like a five delay. second delay. Yes. So on this note, oh my goodness. Now I have to reopen this. Hold on one second. Let me go over here. Go over here. Squish wash applesauce. 
it's going to take a second. But we have Mr. Uh, Jeff Hilliard, who is from the Los Angeles area, and he is going to be singing Abandoned, Consensual Sex Fan, Mulletude, as well as Good Life. You guys don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this music break. So this is about a almost 15 minute break. Okay, no problem.
was Mr. Jeff Hilliard and he is from the Los Angeles area. I really love his music. Um, he he kind of reminds me of a modern day um, Weird Al Yankovic but he doesn't see it the same. I don't know. What do you think Mr. William? Hello? Oh you're muted. Okay, how, okay, does, this how sound? does this sound? Uh, sounds good to me. Yeah, we'll yeah, have, yeah, we'll to, have check to check, with, check the people. with the people. For sure. Um, but yeah, he said, uh, I don't consider myself anything like that. And I was like, I don't know, like as a kid, I would listen to the Dr. Demento show to go to sleep. And um, Weird Al Yankovic was like one of my favorites. But he's like, nope. 
I don't consider myself like him. I consider myself something different, which I appreciate. Okay, okay well, well, I'm still I'm hearing still a little, hearing bit, a little of bit of feedback, feedback. but, uh, but uh, it's uh, not, it's as, not bad. as bad. You know, okay. uh, check, um, check with the... Uh, I'm just hoping, hoping whatever works, works. Okay. I'm willing to go the distance. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, that's... Uh... <sighs> I'm as I said. I'm, I'm still said, hearing I'm it. Still hearing it. Weird. Okay, let me look over here on the soundboard. So I only see you uh, bouncing in one place. So I don't know. Uh, go ahead and say something else. Let me see what I can do. Okay. 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 So I'll mute all these other things. <sighs> Hopefully that works. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, we'll just see what the masses say. I don't want this to be stressful. I just want to, you know, talk horror and have fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's make a mess of it. Yeah. Understood. Yeah, it's weird because yeah, it's weird the because echo comes the in echo about... comes in about five seconds after, five seconds I, start after talking. I start talking. And it makes and it, it uh, makes hard it, for me to uh, keep, for me keep, to my, keep uh, my thought. Uh, thought. <laughs> I totally get that here. Let me um, turn this down a smidge and see if that helps. Okay. Okay. Is it any better? No, it's exactly no, the it's same. No, it's exactly the same. Damn. Well, wow. that's weird. Hold on. Hold on. Because I just turned the uh, speaker down, like, almost to nil, but um, let me try it again. Let's go down to nil. Okay. okay. I've, I've got I've, it now. I've got it now. Is it better? A little bit. A little bit. Oi. All right. You know, it's still funny, you know, it's still to, hear funny to hear voice my echoing. voice echoing. Yeah, I totally get that. Echo. Um, echo. Echo, <laughs> echo, echo. Yeah, I can't stand to hear my voice. And when I'm trying to talk and then my voice interrupts, I'm like, excuse me, I was just trying to talk right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. When, I'm, when, when I'm when trying, I'm to, trying to, do, to do uh, an actual, an actual thing, where thing where I'm speaking, speaking a lot of, a lot of, of stuff. Lot of stuff. Without, Without stopping, stopping, it really it messes, really me, messes up. me up. You know, short, you answers, short no answers, no problem. No problem. And you're still hearing it, like even though I'm mute, you still hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's it hasn't it's, it changed. Holy. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't. It's know what weird. It's weird. Do. It is weird. And what was and even, what was more, even weird more weird is that is for a short, for a time, short time, it went, time, it away. went away. Okay, when was that? So I that was when you were, when wearing, you were the, wearing the, uh, the uh, earphones. earphones. The earphones? Okay, let me try that. Because when I did that, um, it wasn't coming through on this other feed. So let me try. I even tried the A3 and stuff, but let me do this. Um, let me turn this off. Put my headphones back on. Okay. okay, testing one, two, three. Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah, I can hear you. I mean, I can. I no no echo. Because now I don't hear you at all. Uh oh. Um, maybe I should try this. Echo, echo. Hello. Oh, you can't anyway. hear hear me at all. Uh, now I can. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is working a lot better. 
because the echo is down to just a tiny bit in the background and I it's not going to uh, bother me as much when I'm uh, talking. I think we got it. Okay, so I can hear you in my headphones and I finally have it going through the butt, uh, which is where we go for e-talk radio. We have to go to the butt. So, yeah. It's you have a there. butt, huh? Yes, there's a butt <laughs> and it, it's listening. <laughs> Oh, the butt is listening. Oh boy, it is. And hey, that could that could be another horror thing. It's kind of like uh, Rick and Morty, or there was another show. Um, it was called Holy Shit, uh, something League. Oh my goodness, Para League. No, uh, hold on a second. It's on. Um, it's on HBO and they go and it's a robot and it's a guy that got burned going out into space and now he has a negative spirit inside of him. And then this girl oh. with multiple personalities and oh my Never goodness. heard of it, heard of it, but it sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm having a brain fart right now because I can't think of it at the moment, but um, and mm. then um, the guy that played Tarzan, uh, he's actually a guy that was a race car driver and he got killed and now he's in the body of a robot. Interesting. And, yes. It's a pretty good one. Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol. That's what it was. No league. Yeah, it's Patrol. the, it's the uh, DC uh, show. I fucking love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely love it. Okay, Tessa, can you uh, see anyone? You know, can you uh, see the chat? Because I'll oh, I'll answer well. some questions from some of the fans out there. Okay. Well, I can see the chat, and Francis H said Tessa is attractive. Well, thank you. <laughs> that was very nice of you. Oh, he's drunk, so it really doesn't mean a lot then. <laughs> he's got his beer well, goggles on. Well, that's something. You know, at least at least yeah. you got a drunk guy who says, "Oh yeah, you're attractive." Yeah, I'm hot. Not. <laughs> yeah, you're you're hot. Uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, well, so I had has... I've I've had that one before. I've had I had a drunk lady who said, "Oh, oh you're attractive," to, and then uh, puked on me. The one time oh, at a wow. bar. So you got some uh, souvenirs? You did. Yeah, all <laughs> he, over he's me. He's actually greetings from the Netherlands. Well, greetings Netherlands. Um, no in vino in veritas, veritas. Drunk people tell the truth. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And it's true. Like, there's a lot of things that once I get drunk because of all my traumas and shit, like, I keep everything potted inside. But once I get drunk, like, everything flows. So I feel you, Francis. I feel you right there. Do you have any questions for for William here? Uh, he's, he's just waiting, bated breath, for any sort of questions from anyone as far as the Jason series, Camp Crystal Lake, what, what not? Yeah. <sighs> Thank you, Francis. I'm flattered. <laughs> um, Just as long as it's not one of my uh, cyber stalkers, then then I'll just <sighs> simply simply say say a certain thing. Yeah. Okay, so he's asking. He said, "I just joined. What is the topic?" So. Um, Jason Voorhees, Camp Crystal Lake. Um, he also has a show he does called Symphony of Death, which I love. It's well, it's it's flicks. no, 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 no. Symphony of Death is the uh, is the anthology series that I'm writing. Well, it's, what was the uh, show Blood you Bath were doing? Theater. Blood Bath Theater, yes. Yeah, and then I do a podcast called uh, Blood Bath Beyond Podcast, where I Ooh. talk about a film. And I do all kinds of different things there. I also do uh, uh, 
horror media, well, horror memorabilia releases and movie reviews, and I give out the Scream Factory releases for for uh, the next month as well. So yeah, that's pretty like, good. Cyber stalkers. Hmm. I guess everybody has them. It's crazy because I had some crazy dreams last night about having a cyber stalker. Um, but yeah, that's scary shit. And um, okay, so our yeah, cyber here... stalkers are not as romantic as people think. It's it's yeah, pretty yeah. bad. I just a um, couple days ago I had one of these jack immature jackasses sitting there uh, calling my phone. Jeez, oh, he goes. Pete. Hey, buddy, it's Johnny Depp. And he, that's, the, that's the way the voice sounded. Hey, buddy, it's Johnny Depp. Or he goes, hey, this is Harlan Ellison from hell. Oh and, stuff and, and stuff like that. And, oh, you're, you're going to love this, Tessa. You, you know, just, just to tell you how, how immature and how ridiculous these people are. Uh, one of them, and I'll name you by name, Jay. Jay? Yeah, Jay from JTV. Uh, he, uh, actually, because he's such a little petty crap, uh, he went and did an entire video where he's criticizing an ad that I did for Bloodbath Theater. Right. Yeah. Uh, the the ad in question was a homage I did to uh, Sid Haig's, uh, uh Captain Spaulding character. So I had myself, and I was doing the uh, you know kind of like uh, Captain Spaulding did with the. Uh, yeah, you know, where he where he's doing oh you know the chicken and all that I did chicken nuggets and well it's kind of like what I you know I said here you know you know you know bring little Susie and Billy let them watch uh, bloodbath theater and and just fill them up with chicken nuggets with uh, ranch dressing yeah you said that earlier that grossed me out because you're like, Bleh. I'm like oh, yeah no. <laughs> yeah well that was my commercial. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I'm, I'm also planning on uh, putting out exclusive William Patterson for President t-shirts. I would buy one. With my horror host, Skull John, as vice president. Okay, so he's saying, couldn't every fan write a few of those? But it's not that. It's because... Um, they were denying that he was the author. Somebody else was saying they were the author, and it was insane. Like actually, um, actually, away... the person that was saying that they <laughs> were the author uh, is not even a real person. It's no, a fictitious. He's fake. Yeah, he's completely and utterly fake. They went and they set up a Facebook profile with this guy named Dan Fox. And the thing is that they used some jackass from a horror convention and they would go around and they'd put his face on pictures that I did for publicity and they put that, oh, Dan Fox's birthday is August the 13th and that's my birthday. And mm. they said that, oh, well, his his two daughters are named uh, Jeanette and Brittany. Well, my sister's name is Jeanette. And my niece's name is Brittany. So it's it's like total bullshit. And, you know, and they'd go around to Wikipedia and stuff and change the Wikipedia things, changing my name for Dan Fox and stuff and they they've been doing this since uh well they started really going after me in 2015. 
And like you said, they uh, messed it up for Wiki. So instead of you being the author, it said he was, right? Because they totally plumbed that. Oh, what the, oh no, what they did is, well, on the Friday the 13th Wikipedia, there's a, there's a difference between Wikipedia and, yeah, but on the Friday the 13th Wikipedia and the fandom Wikipedia, uh, they they changed it. And then the thing is, what they did is they went to Wikipedia and they had all their friends sign a petition to get my bio pulled from Wikipedia, permanently pulled, and that the name William Patterson cannot be associated with Friday the 13th on there. So the thing is that people tried to correct uh, the section on my books because they, because they, for a while there, that this, you know, and mind you, uh, the Wikipedia thing had been there since 2000. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, 2015 shows up. And all of a sudden, they're pulling my bio. They're pulling the Eric Morris author bio. And they put, for for several years, they've had by an author for the Camp Crystal Lake novels. Then just recently, one of my fans managed to uh, get my name in there but they had to misspell it so now all of a sudden i'm the uh i'm the glittery vampire author <laughs> william pattinson oh shit i think um when i first had you on i accidentally said pattinson when it's pattison yeah it's pattison it's my the apologies Scottish well, Pattinson is also Scottish, but uh, and he is kind of related to me. He's related to my my clan, the clan Pat Pattinson. Uh, I'm in from Scotland. the clan O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, so so he's somewhat unfortunately related, but you know, just distantly. Anyways, yeah, so. Yeah, it's just it's it's been fun, and they they keep sending me these ridiculous memes and putting memes up on on things like uh, putting the cover of uh, Psychotic State up and putting next to it a turd. Oh shit! Yeah, and and they've gotten really gross. They've put my face and my sister's face and my niece's face on an orgy picture and stuff. They're, they're doing little immature things and it's horribly obsessive after all these years. I mean, shit, since 2015, they've been doing this shit. You know, and think about it, how long that is. Okay, so having your name put on an orgy, like, that's got to be good advertisement. My face? No. Well, or your name. Because, because it's a fat person orgy. <laughs> it's 600-pound people. Hey, yeah. what about back in the day? Like, you back know, in the day, then, I didn't care how much you weighed or whatever. Like, still today, I don't care how much people weigh. Like, Yeah, I but I never, I never weighed... 600 pounds that's that's what irritates me they keep saying oh well you're you're a fat uh, you know piece of shit you know and believe it or not right now in woke woke times that is something that you're not supposed to do you're not supposed okay. to be a weight weightist and and go You're after not supposed to say he or people. she and other things. This is why it's so confusing in this age because I don't know what to say. It's like he or she. Yeah, well. And I heard in California, like, if you say he or she and it's not correct, you get put in prison. What the fuck? Is that true or is that just like. No, that's of... bullshit. 
new mythology because, because somebody uh, did that recently if, and they're like, if I say you're a he or she and I'm wrong, I get put in prison. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like prison time for that shit? Oh, bullshit. It, yeah. it is. It's bullshit. <laughs> you know, it's just like saying, oh, yeah, well, well, my gender is, uh, uh, what is it? It's demon, demon, uh. Uh, he, turkey. she, they, or yeah, she, uh, uh, they, whatever. Or, or I don't get it. Like I was never good at English as far as those things go. So I'm just like I'm totally going to fail right now. I'm bad. Well, well the hey, thing is, I just break up my shillelagh and break some fucking knee bones or something. I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, you're not even. Oh my God! Did you hear about the? Uh latest call of duty a uh, video oh, no. game no <laughs> they took all the national flags out of there and they put lgbq flags up okay. and you can't have a national flag and you have to in order to play the game uh put what your pronoun is and it's like give me I, a I fucking wouldn't even know. break I wouldn't even know what to put. Um, it. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. <laughs> they don't have an Amer The only American flag. I have flag, a vagina. <laughs> yeah, the only American flag that they have is one that's being burned. That's it. Oh. In the yeah, entire the game. Day. Like, um, being a veteran, et cetera, and we were going to a bar in Ignacio, which is a tribal land, and it's crazy that they have a bar on tribal land, but here we go, and there was this flag, and it was upside down, I was like, pull over right now, pull over right now, and we did, and we went, and we took it down, and we took it with us, and then come to find out, it was a friend of ours, and it wasn't upside down, it was the way the, um, the eyes had melted and it made it look like it was upside down which i don't fucking get right now i think that's an yeah. excuse um but yeah we stole it and then we gave it back because they said oh well it was the ice and it did this and this and that and that you fly your flag upside down i'm gonna fuck you up because i fought for that but at the same time exactly it's like, you know it, it's bullshit that these that these uh you know and it's a small group which really pisses me off. A small group is sitting there dictating to the rest of us and saying, "Ah, oh, well, you know, you can't have pride because because America was built on slavery and you know what, you know, and all this." Oh and, my god. Okay, you know, so I just saw this movie last night and it's called um You People. I don't know if you've seen it. I generally haven't watch seen it. it yet, but I've heard but, some amusing things about yeah, it. Yeah, Eddie Murphy was in there, so I'm like, it's got to be funny. So I suffered my people, my family, to go through it. And it was basically, you know, um, mostly about African Americans, etc., and and Jewish people. And it's a Jewish person and uh, African American dating. And then her father is very like, oh, this and this and that and that. Um, very against her dating him and so trying to do everything in his power to get rid of this motherfucker but um oh okay so it's kind of a a retelling of who's coming to dinner <laughs> i don't know because i don't think i've watched that but i was just like Damn. oh you haven't oh sydney portier one of he got an academy award for it it's a fantastic story about a white girl who brings her black boyfriend to dinner with her parents. And this is during, of course, the time when you don't bring, uh, you know, them to dinner. This was the time when there was a lot of racism. Yeah. And it was hard because, like, um, at the point where he's like, oh, so you're trying to say... Um, we weren't slaves, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, no, I'm not saying that, but we were slaves like thousands of years before that happened. And they're like, oh, well, you're trying to compare it to that. And there's no way you can p yeah. compare here and there. Like, yeah, we all have get... our own experiences. 
Yeah, every 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 nationality in the world has had slavery. And the thing is to sit there and basically say that, oh, well, every evil in the world is caused by cis uh, heterosexual males is bullshit. And to sit there and say that the best thing that could happen to the world is if the entire white race disappeared you know, try, trying to sit there and call genocide on the white race. Well, guess what? There's too many white people around. And right? we're not going to obey a little bunch of uh, small-minded jackasses. The thing yeah. is that my mom taught me equality. Meaning everybody is equal. Everybody deserves a chance. Everybody is is important not this bullshit where oh well you know it's not it's not racist it's not uh you know racism to uh insult white people okay so um i want to say i'm white but i'm really not i'm part black too part egyptian part all kinds of other stuff because of 23 and me but it's like how can we even put ourselves in certain notations I don't know, and I think a lot of people find comfort in that, but it's like, let go, let that go, and let's just, can we just be brothers and sisters? That's what I want. Yeah, well, the thing is that... I don't want any hard feelings or anything like that. I just want to love you. Well, you you know where this all this woke crap started up, right, Tessa? TikTok. Uh, TikTok. Well, even before TikTok, it was... The Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. Which that chick took That's... the money and she paid for her own shit and she was scandalous too. It's like, what the fuck? Why does everybody have to ruin everything? I know. But the thing was that in TikTok, all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, you can, you can, you know, say, you know, you can come up with these fake genders and stuff because well, you these know, TikTok people... was started by Gina. Yeah, I know. I know. I Surprise. know it was started by uh, Gina. And the thing is that if you know it, if you've heard the thing is that Chinese TikTok is different from ours because it's a lot more cultural, whereas this stuff is all entertainment and stuff, and it's all uh, keyed to tearing apart our society. And, it and me these off ones because... are so stupid because they've been raised on video games where they where they go and they customize their their characters that they think that they can customize themselves and basically say, "Oh no, there is no, you know, men and women you know, there's no male and female. There's no this. I'm, I'm this. I can be a banana. I can be a fish. I can be whatever. You know, a bunch of, bunch of blue and pink haired freak cases. You know, and I, I you I know, when everybody. I was young, I was the I freak care. in in there. And I don't. And I'm sitting there going, "What? The I've always been a hell? freak. I've always been a mutant, and that's why I love everybody the same. Cause I'm a fucking weirdo." Yeah, so but I, I, I love I, and embrace I, weirdos. God, I, I, I hate these ones. And then the thing is that they'll sit there and, you know, you know, villainize, villainize you, anything that you say. And oh, the yeah. fact is, Tessa, I will not censor myself. Oh, I, yeah. you know, I was, I was mentored by Harlan Ellison, who would not censor himself. And if these assholes want to want to give me shit, I'll give them shit back. Fucking and I've too. gotten into fights with right. with these people because they're sitting there going, "Oh, well, you're just a poor fat white person who's uh, so oh, sad." Oh, now and I'm you're going, racist. No, huh? you're you're the sad person. Now they're racist against you. What? Yeah. Why and should I, there and even I said, be that? really, you're calling me a fat person 
when you guys have already said that you're not supposed to, uh, uh, you know, cut down fat people. You know, you're a bunch of hypocrites. Yep. And there's a lot of those out there. And it's like, when you start to try to talk to them, you're like, okay, so why are you calling me this when you feel like this? Uh, yeah. How does that make sense? When we're supposed to love each other, it's supposed to be an open field. It's because... Yeah, it's supposed to be an open field. I mean, shit, Jesus Christ, uh, even even though that's bringing in religion. My brother. Jesus no, Christ. No, I love my brother. Cru got crucified to help us. Okay, so last week we were um, talking about a different book and all these other things, and they're like, Jesus Christ is actually a character in a book. I'm like, how dare you fucking say that? Because to me, Jesus Christ is real, and I really look up to him, and he's my big brother, and I try to implement my life according to him. Love yeah. one another as you would be loved, etc., etc. Like, he was up there on the cross with a thief and a murderer, whatever. Like, he still loved them. And he them. welcomed them into heaven with him. Yeah, and he's like... Uh, please forgive them, Father, because they know not what they do. And that's the way it is with a lot of people right now. There's so much fucking ignorance going on. And Well, yeah. You know, I, just I mean, feel you've like got a it's not... lot of people who are giving out false, you know, they're, they're, they're the false, uh, you know, Christs. They're, they're, they're telling people how to live and, not... and they're okay. doing it wrong. So let me put this up here really quick. So I don't believe that Jesus was a human. Jesus was half God. But the way he lived his life is something that I look up to. And I try to perceive my life after. Instead of going like, I'm going to be religious and I'm going to do everything along this religious sect. I'd rather live my life according to what he did. Which to me is better. But yeah, he was a human shape, but he was not human. He even pushed his friend off off of a barn and his friend died and he resurrected him. Like, how human is that? You know, how many times can we resurrect our friends? If I could do that, I'd still have a lot of friends around, but guess what? They're gone. They're on the other side. But yes, he was transcendent of God. Yeah. yeah. And we all have that light of Christ within us. Doesn't mean we're like Christ, but we're somewhat like Christ. We're Christ-like. Well, we have the potential to be Christ-like. Uh, the so thing saying, is that, you know, it's like love your enemy he like was not, you can... Look at this. But love he yourself. was fully human. He was not fully human. He was part God and part human. Yeah. He no, was. No, no, no. He is part, and guess what? When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, when he went to sacrifice himself, do you know how much turmoil he went through to do that? He didn't oh, want to yeah. do it. He was fucking scared. But of course he, he was, did. because because he had both a human side and a holy side, and he was afraid of the cross, because the cross is a horrible thing to go through. He and... says we don't understand his argument. No, we yeah. do. He was, um, he appeared as human, but in reality, he was human and part God. Yeah. No, he went through a struggle. Like when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he went through so much. He's like, please don't make me do this, please. Like he begged and prayed not to fucking do it because he knew the harm and the torture and everything that would happen. And and God's like, no, you got to do it. Could you imagine and doing that? Here's and here's something that I wanna wanna get out there is why why are we quibbling about uh, what, what Jesus actually was? Let's listen to what he stood for, what he was preaching which is brotherhood, peace, nonviolence. And he was preaching this at a time when the world was conquered 
by conquerors. By Romans and shit, yeah. Yeah, and that people were going through hell. Yeah, and it's like, so, um, well, uh, he wasn't fully human. It doesn't matter. He was trying to have the human experience. And um, he did. He went through all the turmoils. He went through all the shit. He wasn't being there bestowed with the gifts of gods. He was there as a man, like you were saying. He yeah, was a exactly. teacher. Indeed. He was he a teacher. He was here as a teacher. Yes. And I learned from him. And um, when I was a kid, my mom was killed by a drunk driver. My dad went off, off the deep end with alcoholism and, and stuff like that. And as a kid, I actually sought out religion, which was really weird. As a kid, generally, you just watch cartoons and whatever. And I'm like, I need to know. I need to know the truth. And I learned so much. And even going through the military, I went to every sect of the religion that I could. And I just know that religion is good to a certain extent like everybody's got something good to say but in the long run i think i have the right answers because i've learned from them and not one religion is true yeah exactly not one religion is true every religion has a piece of the answer and he said but, that Jesus was not God. That's true. He was not God. He was just a por portion of there's God, Jesus. He was a messenger. Yeah. He was a messenger. He was a messenger made flesh because, you know, before God tried, you know, with like um, the Ten Commandments and all that, Jesus was one that he brought in at this at that time to teach the thing he as he said he was the good shepherd he yeah, was the like, one Jesus responded why do you call me good only god is good okay so that shows the humanism in jesus right exactly uh, also, if I recall, on the uh, Sermon of the Mount, Jesus said this, uh, you know, about those who, who want to judge others. He said, before you judge others, pull the light out of your eyes before... You try to pull the light out of another person's eyes. You are right? hypocrites. And that was the truth. If, if you're going to sit there and judge a person and say that they, that they shouldn't do something, you need to look at your own self and, you know, be, you know when you're jealous of another person, you it need to look be. at yourself more than yeah. you look, look at inward. them because you, you know, you are jealous because you want what they have. And what you should do is think about what you have and what, you know, and what you can do. And, you know, that's, that's one thing I believe in as well. Me too. You know, and as an as I an find... author, I try to help people. You oh, know, I love you, brother. And you know, I don't get I don't get anything back from it. If anything, half the time I go and I try to help people, and they go and they throw it in my face. And that's when you just ignore it because, like, even this year, I'm trying to teach my kids how to do for their fellow man. So I'm like, hey, you guys want to go bell ringing? And they're like, yeah. They were so excited about it. And so we went bell ringing. It was so fucking cold this winter. But we still rang the bell and we're earning money. And they ended up closing up our, our provisions because Bayfield's too small. So they went all the way back to Durango. But it's like, we did it at least two or three times. We tried and we raised a lot of money. I know we did. 
Because there was nice. like dollar dollar bills, y'all, not just change, but like tens and twenties and other things going in there. And they're like, sorry, we had to close it down. But I wanted to teach my kids doing for your fellow man and doing charity, etc. That was important to me because it is important. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, before, you know, when I when I was able to actually do a lot of stuff. You know, what what people don't realize is that I'm having, you know, I had a heart attack in around 2015 as well. I got a heart monitor right now. I'm checking out my shit. And because of the pills and stuff that they've given me to keep me going, uh, I've, I've lost most of my ability to walk. I mean, I can barely really? walk around. Uh, if I walk uh, to the next house, I'm exhausted because my legs don't want to work. And anyways, I can't I can't do the stuff that I really used to love to do. I used to walk up town. I used to walk all over the place and I can't do it anymore. You know? I can't, you know, I can't go to a convention anymore unless, of course, I sit there with a, you know, one of those sit down uh, things with the wheels and that. Mm -hmm. And that is just so embarrassing and it's so hard to do. I'm sorry, but don't think about that. Like, you know, it's the human experience and we all have to go through our own. But, but it is I like, cannot it be... even I can't I can't do a convention as an author now because there's no I way I could. can uh, trying to carry all that stuff into over to a okay, table. Okay, so you go and then you have people come. So if you ever do that, let me know and I will try to be there and do that for you, like carry all the other shit that you need or whatever. Yeah. You've got to have somebody there within the area that are fans of yours to carry that shit for you. Like, seriously, if not, I will try to be there for you. I mean, yeah, I, I, mean I, I, you know, though, though none of these convention organizers will have me now for, you know, because of the, all the crap, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm, I'm more. Okay. Busy. And that shows more on their you know, particular, you know, character more than yours. Exactly. And there's no reason that they should be like, oh, well, you can't be here because blah, blah, blah. No, um, they should actually be eating it up and be like, yeah, come in. Because guess what? There's going to be all kinds of shit because of the whatever's going on. Yeah, because because of the cyber stalkers and the... Yeah, because the thing is that if you know the last couple of conventions that I've that I was in, actually, actually, uh, I think I told you this the last time is I went to a local uh, horror host convention. It was called Creature Con, mm-hmm. and the thing is, I was there. I was hanging out with. The once I wasn't invited to it, but I was a member of the public, and I actually got got John. I had um, John Stanley, the guy that I named John after. I had him right. sign the back of John, so he has his signature on there. But I was hanging out with all these Bay Area horror hosts and stuff, and had Horse. fun. My sister actually you know got into the uh, uh, raffle and she won a couple of the prizes there mm-hmm. and what ended up happening is after I got back from the convention two of my uh, cyber stalkers went and contacted the organizer of creature con Whee! And said that they were at the convention. Now, they're over halfway across the country. And and they went and said that 
uh, they were at the convention and that I tried to sell them my books at the convention. <laughs> I didn't have How any copies. Right. I didn't have any copies of the books. I wouldn't do that because uh, everyone in, in that thing had to have a license. That's insane. If anything, I bought books there and videos and stuff. I spent over $300 buying stuff from from the horror hosts there to support well, if anything, them we do have to go to our second music break i hate to cut you off oh no problem we are on a roll here but we have mr jeff hilliard from the los angeles area he's such a talented individual i love to hear from him he's going to be singing finger bang your day silicon wave cock the hills and then we have gravity from krakow poland with Take a Walk in My Shoes. You guys don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this musical break. much hate we have to get honest with ourselves we have to take stock in what our part is in all of this madness we have to let go and we focus on giving love setting that intention and each and every single one of us gets up every day with the intention to give love and we do it we go out there and we give love every single day each one of us gets out there and makes love to our day giving our day
tell me? What to do? Welcome back, and thank you so much for joining us this evening on We Are Paradox Media's Late Night in the Rockies. We have Mr. William in the case vault. Mr. William, how you doing? Oh, doing good. Doing good. Had me Special had me a chair. few potato chips while I was waiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. So, anyways, you know, when we when we left off, I was talking about CreatureCon. And the incident there where the um, cyber stalkers were, uh, you know, told the uh, organizer that I was selling books. Oh, no. At the convention. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. You shouldn't because the thing is that the people have contracts there. And I didn't have any books. I had a backpack, which I had John in, and I bought a bunch of books from uh, uh, another author, Raina Young. She she was doing a young adult uh, book series, and I bought some for my niece, my uh, my another niece of mine, and, uh, you know, a couple for myself. But that's pretty much it. I mean, I you know bought T-shirts and stuff, but I I didn't sell anything. But here, these ones are sitting there, uh, and they're halfway across the country, saying that they went to this convention, which is which was, you know, a small convention at a movie theater. Okay, Out so um. This guy here, so, he's kind of talking some smack, our listener. Uh, let me show it here. Cyrus Duggers of an author nobody knows about. Seriously? Seriously. An author nobody knows about. I know about this author. Many people know if they read the Camp Crystal Lake uh, trilogy, whatever, they know about him. What are you talking about? Yeah, pretty much. What are you talking about? Um, exactly. I recently had a guy, uh, I didn't even mention the Camp Crystal Lake novels, and all of a sudden he mentioned mentioned it to me. He goes, yeah, when are you going to be able to reprint some of them Camp Crystal Lake novels? Because, you know, they're very expensive uh on Amazon, and I told him I couldn't do it. But anyways, yeah. So I mean, I you know, what you what you have out there is, well, let let me put it this way, Francis. Uh, the people who are harassing me have are real petty ones, and some of the reasons for doing it are really ridiculous uh and the one guy like, um some twins that were doing videos and somebody else too yeah i, I blocked the soska sisters on mm -hmm. facebook and so all of a sudden that's that's reason to attack me 
on there because you know they they have kind of like a uh cult a cult like uh yeah. yeah and then another guy another one of my cyber stalkers uh he he uh blocked me because i blocked him on facebook because he was talking smack about me when i was talking horror and i gave him a whole shitload of chances i you know i don't automatically block people but and then the thing I know you is also that like talked about your alter ego eric what like is, huh? isn't that eric no, Eric Eric Hyde is this guy's yeah. name. I w I didn't want to say his name, but his name's Eric. And I'm the sorry. thing is that he was talking <laughs> shit about me, and then he started. Uh, you know, then he was one of the first ones to start up with this Dan Fox bullshit. And he's he's sitting there, and here here's how here's how petty these ones do, are they go and they sit there and they make fake profiles and uh go around starting trouble for me mm -hmm. i have you know attacking know, friends of mine attacking doubts. family like, well, this guy this guy was here forever and then he's like oh yeah keep making shit up blah, blah, blah. and it's like no you're not like you are the original author for this shit and then other people come up here and they make it an indifference where, hmm, is it really him or not? Yeah. And it's like, you know, uh, one of my, you know, one of my associates, um, uh, Joshua LaRue, he actually went out and he found a couple of people who worked for uh berkeley books at the time and actually one of them was the person who brought me the contract to sign for doing the cam crystal lake novels so you know they're full of shit right but um anyways yeah so the thing is that two of these cyber stalkers as I said, they went to uh, the CreatureCon uh, organizer and basically said said that sh stuff about me. And here is here is the thing that really pisses me off, Tessa. Is these ones go? Oh well, we know about William Patterson, and we're considering <laughs> yeah. if we will have him. Uh, be able to participate in future conventions. They literally said shit like that. Excuse me? Yeah. So my attitude is this, you know, fuck you and your convention. If, you, if you're going to be like that. Fuck yeah, you exactly. And your convention. You know, I, you know, I'm not a beggar with a bowl. No. You know, and if you don't want me at your convention, fine. I'm not there. Exactly. If they want to ruin it because somebody else but, is trying but to it's petty, be but a it's petty hater bullshit. and a faker or whatever, it's like, go fuck yourself. Hey, you know where you can put this? Right up your ass. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, um, you know, and... <laughs> You know, this this whole thing about me being an author that nobody knows. Uh, no, uh, during the times between uh, Jason Goes to Hell and you know Freddy versus Jason, uh, fans were looking for my books. My books failed in their initial run. Because of Berkeley Books not promoting the damn things. But, you know, after, after they were out of print, fans were looking 
for these books. And, you know, a few years ago, oh, man, you'll, you'll love this. There was an auction in Scotland, and they sold a complete set of my Camp Crystal Lake novels. Nice. And they sell, sold them for the equivalent of $2,000 each. And they were bought up by this gentleman who worked in Japan. An American guy who worked in Japan. Well, Scottish guy who worked in Japan. And the thing is that when I did... Uh, you know, the last convention that I actually had a table at, which was Martinsville Horror Fest, this gentleman actually flew in and he got me to sign his books. Now, is that, a, is that an author that, that nobody knows? When my books are worth, you know, was worth that much to this person? And he co comes from Japan and ha just to have his books signed so that he can give them to his son when his son come, becomes of age because he had a newborn son and he wanted him to enjoy these books. Right. And the thing is uh, on, you know, and not just the Camp Crystal Lake novels, people who have read my book, Psychotic State, have been incredibly surprised at how wonderful it is. You know, people who start reading it, it's like they don't want to stop reading it. And it's, you know, and for people And that's who a have, good sign of a good book. Like, yeah. when you start to read it and you don't want to stop, that's a sign of a good book for sure. And a lot of my, uh, the people who have bought psychotic state they have been people who have been bullied were bullied when they were young and bullied when you know as adults and my book made them feel better yes it's about a guy who flips out and he goes and starts killing his bullies but they felt you know it it was like it took an incredible weight off of them after all those years. And I get messages from people all the time about it. Right. You know, so that, that, that tells you something about my writing. You know, no, I'm not, true. I'm like, not so, everybody some takes loser. it personal. No, and then you're talking about bullies and all this other stuff, like, as far as the officers and all this other shit, like, I can see different characters, different things going on, um, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know, there's somebody in here trying to make me feel kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, oh, really? Yeah, they're like, uh, I love you, you can see me, and I'm like, I can't see you. Of course no. you can. No. No, I can see William over here telling his story. But yeah, I love you. Yeah, you can see William. You're amazing. I love you. Okay, so Jen says, here we go. Your books are wonderful. Pretty much. Uh, amazingly enough, oh, I'll, I'll tell you this story. This is this is awesome about how how stupid one of these cyber stalkers was and i'll even mention his name because you can find his quote unquote review on on uh, youtube a gentleman named alan albertson uh oh, damn. who is a hater of mine he's you know, he's well known on Amazon.com for uh, saying shit about about my books and stuff. You know, him and him and his buddies uh, 
have trashed my books, you know, on on the book pages for years. And the thing is, all the you know, all of a sudden, uh, he ends up with a copy of my last book that I that I finished, uh, Symphony of Death Four. Shadow Man versus the Undead. And he decides that he's going to do a video review on it. And he's sitting there going, Oh, well, this guy doesn't know how to write. His book's full of plot holes and stuff. But during that, he admits, and you're going to love this, Tessa, he admits that he's a failed author. That he had published yes. a book and it failed. Wah, wah, wah. I've got eleven books under my under under my hat. I know. You know, I've You're... got I've got uh, let me see eight short stories that I've finished for Symphony of Death. You know, got four more to finish it off, but. Uh, Anyways, and and he's sitting there criticizing me and saying, oh, yeah. well, it's just awful. It was just like, like that first book of his, uh, Robert Diablo. That one was horrible. Wee, wee. All of it was a, all of it was about him, uh, him insulting, uh, That's people that he That's doesn't that. like on the internet. No, I was parodying some people that I knew on the internet, but yes. uh, it was in a humorous way. Mm. And the thing is that he's sitting there and he's talking about how awful the first book was and how much, how many plot holes there were. And then he goes to the fourth book and he's talking about that it's full of plot holes and stuff. Well, it's an anthology. You're supposed to read them in succession, and right. and you know, yeah, there's plot holes because you're going from the first to the fourth book without reading Why the other two. Why wouldn't there be plot holes? There's got to be spaces and gaps and other things. Not everything fits together seamlessly. Come on. No. And and the thing is, every you know, every author gets that that oh yeah, there's plot holes. But the thing is that you know, if people actually read my books, they'll get an idea of what's going on in the book. You know, in the in the story. So did you get to watch uh, M M Night Shyamalan's movie, The Knock at the Cabin? Holy uh, shit. not yet. Oh, okay, so I'm not going to ruin it for you, but holy shit. Oh, don't worry that about it. Ruin it one. for me because uh, the fact is that with me, I, 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 I don't, with me, it's how the, how the movie is done, how, how it looks visually and stuff yes, that matters. So the story, I can, you know, people can tell me uh, spoiler reviews on it, to till anything and it won't ruin my appreciation of the film. So what did you think was gonna happen? When you uh, see the advertisement, what do you think was gonna happen? I was thinking that the world was gonna end. Exactly. Yeah, so I kinda let figured. Me, let me Take a drink. I kind of figured that that the crazy people were going to be right, and that it was, and that they that the thing is that that at the end they don't kill the person. They they don't do what they're supposed to do, and that's the they end. They can't. Okay, so they are the four nights of the apocalypse, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. The and four horsemen. Was, yes, exactly. So they go in there and they're like, we can't kill you, but you need to process yourselves as you give a sacrifice and then you can save the world. And so they go one by one by one. Oh my God, I'm getting goosebumps right now because it was that crazy. But, um, so, 
they're saying, you can sacrifice somebody. If you don't, this will happen. And then they decide not to. So that first apocalypse happened and they had to chop off the head of the first person. So they put this sheet over their head at first. And then they say, these people of the human race have, have been judged. Chop. Head is gone. That shit happened. Blah, blah, blah. So then the first thing happened. Same thing with the next one. This amount of human people have been judged. Blah, blah, blah. Put, put the thing on their heads. Chop off their head. Blah, blah, blah. It has been done. Every single time. So there's only four. So at first it was like famine and other things like that. And then it was, um, okay. things of the air, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's crazy. And these people are like, Oh my God. Like they're so stressed out. Cause they're like, um, we didn't know this was going to happen, but we kept having these dreams. And then we met up on this boardwalk and we had the same dream, blah, blah, blah. We were even wearing the same clothes. Interesting. Kind of that. And and so yeah, they're each explaining themselves. Hey, this is me. Um, I was um a person that worked in the holy shit, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Working in the uh facility where I feed you food and all this other shit, blah blah blah, or I was a nurse, this and this and that and that, blah blah blah. And I had a kid and my kid liked pancakes. Other things like that. Like there's so many different things. The very last guy was a second grade teacher. Yeah, That's I recall insane. the big guy. Yeah. That was my favorite guy because he's like, no matter what happens, we're still going to be best friends, right? She's like, yeah. Um, Holy shit. I'm still getting the goose pimples. But it's like, um, yeah, we're still going to be best friends, right? She's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, T. Shane, like all that shit. Like that one chick, she was like a line cook and she had a son and the guy's like, I don't even believe she had a son. In the end, in reality, she did have a son. Once she, he looked through the bags and shit and saw that it was true. But it's like you have with this an amount of minutes, if you don't say yes, in order to keep the earth from ending. And so they're like, <clears throat> I don't know. They actually saved the world in the end. But holy shit, could you imagine if that was you and your kid and your lover or your wife or whoever? Oh, yeah. That? that was insane. Like, I was just like, oh my God. Totally intense. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin Sorbo is working on a series of films that that is like that it's about uh the end of the world and and he they've already done like three films on it and Damn it. and it's an it's interesting he just released number 3 in the series well that to me the knock at the cabin was intense and um the one guy was just like because he was an attorney and he's like, oh, I've seen this before. I've seen this and this and that and that. Like, had he kept his fucking individual perspective out, I think a lot sooner they would have come to a conclusion because the other partner was like, dude, I see it. And I saw it. Like, he saw it in the mirror behind that person. He's like, I saw something in the mirror. And he's like, shut your fucking face. He seriously saw it. And he's like, no, I saw something in the mirror. And he's like, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. I saw something in the mirror. Well, you had a concussion. So you really don't have a say. But he did. He actually saw it. I don't Interesting. Know, it's pretty intriguing. Nope. Nope. The only, the only movie that I've actually gone to the movies to see is... Uh, <laughs> You're going to laugh your ass off. <laughs> Magic Mike's Last Dance. 
Ooh, I want to see it. Because oh my Sama god, Hayek I was and Magic Mike. What what? Let's go. I was in a I was in a movie theater full of drunken, you know, women horny people hooting, <laughs> hooting uh, <laughs> with my sister. And believe it or not, the moment that movie started, not a sound all the way through. And then the thing is that the women, at, when the uh, credits started up, they stood up and they applauded. And I'm talking, you know, these were women who were watch, watching this and it's like, I'm sitting there going, whoa, what, what? on this movie. Yeah, I I, I agree, uh, Jen. Uh, world has gone crazy. It has. It's gone crazy, and the thing is that us few uh, sane people have to, uh, you know, have to endure. That's what we have to do. You know, I can't I can't let the cyber stalkers uh win. And if no, anything, I'm sure. I'm winning by attrition. Yes, spank their I'm, ass. Yeah, I'm winning by attrition because right now, believe it or not, I think I've I've only got like two or three of them left. And at one point I had like twenty-four. Right. Who were going out of their way to uh, attack me? You know so what? So that's a, that's that's something. I know um, you're going through this shit. You've lost your sister. You've lost your mom. You lost all kinds of shit. And oh these yeah, people still continue to fucking attack you. And I just yeah, and you know. and here here's something that that people are going to be really pissed off about. My middle sister, Linda, the mm -hmm. thing is that she ended up, she died of a heart attack due to stress. Yep. And those little bastards were attacking her. Exactly. They were attacking my family. They were attacking her and talking shit and sending those memes and shit at her. And I think that's what, like, stressed her out. She's like, fuck. They're well, that, my family. that They're and her family, us. which really stressed her out. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. So, you know, she she I'm ended up hoping, dying. Like... And, and, and what gets me is the, those assholes are sitting there going, Oh, well, you're, you're blaming us for your, your sister's death. May, you uh, know, maybe you yeah. should have quit, uh, quit horror and... and uh, no. No. No, no, never should you have quit horror. Never should you have quit at all. Fuck no. them and, and fuck I what won't. they're doing. And yes, they are to blame. Yeah, they because are. Because they were a stressor and she knew it and you knew it. And it is, it is a stressor and you can actually yeah. fucking sue for that. Seriously. I hate to say that because I don't want to be like, Oh, oh yeah. well, according I'm according to them, pursuit, they're not doing or anything wrong. According oh, no, to them, they they're are. not doing anything wrong because, oh well, you 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 think that you're a, a famous writer, so so we can do whatever we want to you because uh, famous people have no rights now. You know what? This is a fucking bullshit. Oh, I know it is. I know it is. It's bullshit. You know. Oh, well, you want to be famous? Well, we're going to show you what fame is. And, and they're oh, going to... Oh, let me show you. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll show them, you know, if I, if... Oh, man, if I, you know, I, I, I just want to win the lottery. Oh, God, if... Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh yeah, because here's here's the Here thing. If I won the lottery, I'd I'd get out cash. I'd put I'd do a video with me sitting there with this big thing with like over a hundred thousand dollars. 
yeah, and I'd right. go, oh, well, I want the addresses and personal information of all of my cyber stalkers. The person who can bring me all that will get this money. That's, you know, it's it's like Mel Gibson in that one movie. And I can tell you that those guys are going to be shitting their pants if any if I did anything like that. Because they'd know that somebody would turn them in because they don't really have real honest-to-goodness friends. They have just uh, accomplices and allies and those allies are greedy as shit. So right. I get my information, and then the real pain would start because then I drag them all into court. And you you oh. want to talk celebrities? Celebrities hey, let's have go to spent night court. That's what I want. Hundreds? To go to. No, night court. celebrities have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. There are ten people. In jail right now on 10 year, uh, you know, you know, for 10 Absconses, years, sconces basically, like, ten yeah, year and trying to figure out what they the spent fuck is hundreds this? of what the fuck thousands is that? of dollars to put them in jail and they won, uh, charging them with cyber stalking and they took all these people's, you know. They, they sued them after they got them in jail. They sued them for everything that they had. You know, and this was like uh, people like Jennifer Lawrence and them. And, See, and yeah, they lost like, hundreds oh, of thousands to... of dollars, but they put these people in jail. Yeah, she's trying to join through StreamYard. No, she's trying to join through Skype. And I'm like, this ain't Skype, bitch. This is StreamYard. Hmm. So I'm gonna try to But anyway, so just don't get it. so did you hear about um our brother who is going through fucking dementia and Alzheimer's? Yeah, yeah, I did. I was fucking blown away. I was like, "What the fuck? Didn't he just do a movie?" Yes, he did. Um, yeah, but those movies fuck? are three years old. They shot them three years ago. Yeah. And those were his last films. And honestly, Tessa, they're they're crap films. Well, and I was it's just like sad. I was like, what the fuck? Like you what's know, going on? I mean on they're there? low budget pieces of crap. I mean his last four films you know that have been released you know the last couple of years, those are completely and utterly crap. Exactly. And it's sad for for him. It really is. And you know, I I know because I'm having I love Bruce issues. Willis. Like he was one of my heart lives. I love that guy, you know. Um, I love the movies he did, etc. And then I know he did some just recently, and I'm just like, seriously? Is he seriously just like recently going through this shit? Because didn't he just no? Make it's a few it's movies? been going on for years, but it's yeah. gotten bad enough where he can where it's affecting his his ability to speak and stuff. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, what the fuck is happening? And, you know, and that's can't... their main thing. They're saying, like, everything's okay, but his uh, amount of ability to communicate is very hardcore. And to me, that's so sad. Like, communication yeah. is key. It's very fucking important. And I don't know. Yeah, uh, communication and his memory. He can't. He can't remember words. Yeah, like uh, you're talking. It's kind of like when my husband had a stroke, and I'm like, okay, instead of taking you thirty minutes from here and going to town, I'm going to take you to the fire department because it's five minutes away instead of basically twenty five minutes away. Yeah, and um, 
he was saying things like giraffe and this and this and that and that like every fucking single second counts and the things that they could do taking him there was most important because they're like okay we're gonna put this in they're gonna do this and once you get there you can you can renege or whatever and so there was a doctor that was like okay we have this very experimental drug going on and if you choose to use it it can bring him back 99 point whatever percent i'm like let's fucking do it and it worked it worked it was amazing yeah. but it's those that are like you have to go how how much further like i don't know had i decided to go to the hospital instead of the fire department what would have happened you know there's so many different choices you can make so many things that can happen but yeah i'm pretty lucky i think because i was just like i'm not ready to wipe this guy's ass and feed him like spoon feed him <laughs> um, yeah i know it's it's, it's not a not a good situation with that and unfortunately you know i'll i'll admit it here is that uh i'm having to go through uh stuff where i'm have i'm having issues with words mm -hmm. and memory in that so every year i have to go every year from now on i have to go and have a test done on me to see how how bad my memory's gotten because I'll have times when I can't remember certain words. I mean, I had one time when I was writing and I couldn't remember how to spell the. That's pretty bad. I know. Bad. Is it T-H-A or T-H-E? Yeah. Well, I couldn't... I couldn't remember how to spell the and it happens once in a while and then i won't be able to remember for like 10 minutes and then it'll come back and you know for for last couple of years i thought it was uh my medication but this person who did the test on me said oh no it's not medication you know, we'll just we'll just check and make sure because you know it's just old age and stuff, and and saying that I have um, a cognition disorder, <clears throat> and it's like no, I don't have, you know, I'm. I know I have all the timers. I don't have Alzheimer's. I don't have dementia. I have all the timers because it happens all the fucking yeah. time. <laughs> no, I have what's called old timers. And yeah, well, um, mine's called all the timers, but yes. And my Same sister, thing. she she has memory problems too, but hers came from the fact that she slipped in Rite Aid and fell and hit her head oh. and it caused uh, problems. Yeah, mine came ago. from smoking weed for so many years and now I've tapered off since I, since I started growing. I don't smoke as much and, you know, I give it to Amazing, my kids and I'm because just like, here you go. Surprisingly enough, uh, I've been taking, uh, you know, those pot gummies Oh, yes. And it's helped my memory. That's awesome. It's helped my memory. Yeah. And believe it or not, it kicked my metabolism in. And I ended up losing 45 pounds. That's awesome. And for me, it's mushrooms. And it's like things are so like omnipresent and happier and blah 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 it's kind of like my depression medicine i'm just like yay i'm still alive um but yes mine has been mushrooms yours has been weed so maybe we can trade well it's it's not exactly weed it's it's more like hemp and the yeah, thing is yeah. i can't i can't you know i'm allergic believe it or not i'm allergic to marijuana but i have no problem with hemp 
-hmm. I don't know what it is, but the, the gummies that I'm using has hemp in them and it helps right. me. But if I'm near a person who is smoking marijuana, mm -hmm. my face swells the, up. Like, oh, really? So the contact yeah. or whatever with the smoke? Yeah. So exactly. maybe if you were to eat it instead of the smoke part, you could yeah, and take. and um, you know I get itchy. Yeah, like for right now, like I have this thing on my heart and it's itching the shit out of me right now, because I think I have like um. Shit, I'll. I'll... Uh, I have this thing as far as like um the patch. And I was doing good at first, but now it's just been itching the shit out of me. And I have about, like, mm. one or two days left of this. But it's a heart monitor. And I'm just like, ugh. It's, like, totally itching me. And that's what yeah, I was you ever about. Yeah, you ever like, seen the movie Hitch? I don't think so. With, uh... Let me know. What is it? Uh, it's, it's... This one with uh, the Fresh Prince, and he um, he's playing this guy that hitches up people. You know, he he the dating coach. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that on on this one date, he he ends up he has a date with this woman, and he actually he accidentally eats crab. And his face swells, uh, up. swells up and stuff, and he can't see, and his mouth is all swelled up. Well, oh, shit. a few years ago, my niece thought that she was being funny, and she blew pot smoke in my face. Oh, no, that's and not funny. My face looked exactly like... Hitch, you know, within an hour, my face, you know, my eyes were all swollen shut, and my face right. was like that. My lips were uh, swelled up, and I had to uh, drink I Benadryl. I just want to say really quick, like night, night, love and light to all our people listening out there. Um, yeah, but continue. You had to take Benadryl. To get over this? Yeah, I had to sit there and drink a whole bunch of Benadryl. Damn. And, you know, it was horrible. And my hands, uh, my hands swelled up and everything. And it's like, yeah, people did people didn't believe it until they till they saw it and almost went into the hospital. Right. But I started drinking Benadryl, and uh, it's horrible. Yeah, and that's crazy, too, because, like, my grandson, we had his birthday party. We went out to the rec center. He floated around. Then we went over here, and we were eating his cupcakes and whatever else. And he had his own general cake. And this chick was over there, like, wham, 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 wham. Because she was high on Benadryl. Hmm. And somebody had decided, hey, uh, if you're going to overdose, here you go. And she had taken it all. She actually went in to the guy's stall and there was one pill left and a bottle a plateau, basically an open package there that showed Benadryl and a a pill that was like wet but it fell out of her mouth mm -hmm. and we were able to give that to the cops and it, it was so fucking sad it's cause like why why would you decide to do that but you know she was all over life she decided she's gonna overdose on Benadryl I've heard Tylenol I've heard ibuprofen I heard all kinds of other shit Benadryl oh yeah overdose. yeah and, and the Till thing that is day, that they Tylenol and that, that'll uh, damage your kidneys and your and liver. your liver, yep. And she's yeah. like, yep, Benadryl, um, that's me. Now one with thing, me, one she left. in that incident, I just drank a bottle of Benadryl uh, cough syrup. 
right. and it made me drunk. Yeah, definitely. But it helped because yeah, like I would I was going you're drunk, through. You're okay, and then you just like you don't even know it's happening. Yeah, well, I mean, it put me to sleep, and the next day uh, I was fine. Swelling was gone and everything. Well, it was sad because, like, she did that and she overdosed on the pills, which was Benadryl. And then her phone was dead. So they're like, how do we contact your parents? Had I not had kids that I had to take home because um, it was my grandson's birthday party, I'd be like, hey, you can come charge your phone over here. But no, I need to take kids home and get the fuck away from this. Right. Well, um, yeah, definitely. But at the same time, it's like, I wish I could have been there for that. But at the same time, I need to get my kids away from this. So I don't know. Like they're just no like, understood. Just need to get a hold. You know, once in a while, once in a while, you have to uh, deal in priorities. Yeah, they're like, we just need to get a hold of your parents. So I'm like, I'm sorry, I just need to get my kids the fuck away from here. Um, hopefully somebody can help you out. But yeah, I felt kind of bad about that. And she was just like there. She's like wink, wink, wink. Like she's all, ooh, like totally fucked up on Benadryl. Never been there. Never done that. But I get it. Well, the, well, the and people who work at the at the restaurant could could have uh, helped. Okay, so it wasn't a restaurant. It was the rec center. And oh, it was a rec was center. Nice. Well, the person yeah. the person who manages the rec center should have. Uh, well, they were very it. nice, and like we're doing our thing, and I was like, you know, I wasn't even buzzed or anything, but I knocked over some milk, and I was like, oh shit, trying to fix it and trying to clean up. She's like, oh here I am, here let me fix this for you. Um, but at the same time, this shit was happening, and um, even when I was like, oh, I th accidentally threw away my grandson's first birthday, you know, candle. And then I try to dig it back out, and they're like, don't do it, don't do it. Because that chick threw up in there, and you see this, like, red uh, gastrointestinal fucking throw up into the binge, and it was really bad. But I was like, oh, no, that's, it's not there. That's like, something. this is, yeah, this is brand new stuff. This is not it. And he, here I found it. And they're like, oh, no, no. Um, everybody was very super worried about it. And it makes me sad. Like, even my kids today talk about it. They're like, Mom, what about that girl that did this? And I'm like... Yeah, that's not that's, that's, fun. Not that's fun that uh, somebody ruins, ruins the kid's first birthday. I know. It's like, seriously? We have to deal with this shit? Let's just forget about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know it's hard though. Like for me, I was just like, let's keep going, let's keep going. Everybody else was like, Pinterested basically on that. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna do my own thing, and everybody's like, centered on that. Just like Jen right now, she's like, uh, it's not working, so let me reset my uh, iPad. Blah blah blah. Um, give me a minute. No, different people are stuck on it. For me, I was just like. What? No, well, everything's all good. Here it is. Put it back in its bin. Number one, number one. Right in back, back into its little pad. Everything's okay. But I did think about it, like afterwards, as far as like this girl that tried to end her life for what reason? Was it a boyfriend that didn't accept her? What the fuck Probably. reason was it? Like for me, it's like why. I don't understand. I don't get it. And then they're like, um, they're so scared because her phone was dead. And they're like, we just want to contact your parents. How can we do that? I'm like, I have a plug, but sorry, I'm leaving. Shouldn't Plus, we have anyway, a plug might for not every be phone? The, no, it might not be the same plug. Yeah, shouldn't they have a plug for every phone in the ambulance and be like, here we go, magic plug. Yeah, because I mean, seriously, I mean, you get the, you know iPhones. They have the 
they have their own special plug. And the androids have the U cords. Like, it's basically circular U cords. Come on. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah like I, don't, I don't. I don't. Mine has a very standard cord, but mine's a Moto. Oh, Moto. Yeah. I like it. You know, it's a it's a Moto. Uh, uh, what what is it? G thirteen or something like that. Right. No, no, no. Moto seven. Moto seven. That's what it is. So you are an Android. I'm an iPhone, and I'm only an iPhone eight, which is not that good. Like I think it's up to twelve or fourteen. I'm not sure, but yes. My sister's been bugging about she wants an iPhone 14. Ooh. And it's like, it's Give like, Jeanette, you can't even <laughs> use the damn phone that you've got. And you keep asking me to help you. And I can't even use the damn thing. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, you know, these, these iPhones are just, totally fucked up to me. I like my Moto because it's very user, uh, you know, user accessible. Oh, you quasi my tail. And, you know, I mean, I know how to, I know how to use pretty much everything in my phone. So, I don't know. Like, after this last weekend, I'm kind of like, holy shit. I just can't believe somebody would do that. And it makes me so sad. And then they're like, we can't even contact your parents. I'm like, holy fuck. What the fuck is going on with this society? Like, people <laughs> are lost and confused. And it makes me so sad. I no, I understand. It. You know, I'm I'm dealing with with that with my niece right now, and I'm not going to go into it. But yeah, it's it's been a busy few days with that. You know, she's Hasn't she's been... dealing she's dealing with a Chad. Let's put it that way. Hasn't it been like kind of open? Like things have been very closed off, and now it's pretty open. Like our besties are siblings like a lot of other people are are there and in the open how do you feel oh sorry we got jen coming in jen 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 hello, hi beautiful. hello hi oh my god my voice is echoing <laughs> so i'm good how are you guys oh very well very well indeed so did you have something to add to what we were discussing? I must add that you are very gorgeous and thank you for joining us. <laughs> You're welcome. You're gorgeous as well, sister. Um, I honestly heard bits and pieces because I was trying to get this thing to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But the fact of it is, is that people kill themselves or want to commit suicide because they either hate their life, something in their life isn't going well. Or they're just tired of everything and they're trying to end that pain for once and for all. Yeah. What I, what I saw, it, what I came up with in the story was, in fact, that I don't think that the person wanted to kill themselves but they wanted, they wanted to people to shit. help her and the thing is i mean it's it's like my my niece is very much that way she's very dramatic and stuff and you know they they do that and then they go into a social uh situation so that they can be you know, that people will help them and, you know, feel sorry for them and stuff. That's that's what I get out of it. They don't really want to die. They just want to want to 
do some drama so that they get help. They need somebody to understand. It's not like they need the drama, but they need somebody to understand what the fuck they're going through. They fucking yeah, hate but, the drama. But they they but don't need or of... want the drama. Oh, 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 they do want the drama. That's the thing. It's, um, it's a way certain, some people are that way. They're, you know, they, there is such a thing as a drama queen. I've, yeah, I've dealt I've seen with them, them all my life. I yeah. know what a drama queen Those is. Those aren't the ones that commit suicide. No, um, they're the ones that quote unquote attempt suicide. But the thing is that they call all their friends mm. and sit there and say, "Oh, look, I'm saying look, I'm going, I'm look. leaving. Oh, take care of my take care of my dog. Oh no, don't come over here and that and." And then, then it's oh, oh god, yeah, it's, it's always a mess. Dizzy. You know, like, like for the, you know, I don't really want to say this, but my niece has been going. Oh, I'm just going to stop eating, and I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 the kind of stuff that I'm that that well, we're dealing the new with. Age, like suicide but not it's like oh i'm just gonna quit eating or i'm gonna quit doing this or i'm gonna quit doing that and blah blah blah. And then i'm going to die pretty not much really, but generally people that are going to commit suicide don't say anything they just and, do it. and the thing is that the reason why she's going through this is bullshit oh god you know, you it, it's over done? a Chad. Let's put it that way, a Chad. A Chad. Fuck you, yeah, Chad. Yeah, you know, you know what a Chad is, right? Right. Yes, Tessa? I know. Yeah. Yes, he's yeah, better it's than all everyone over else. A Chad. And, yeah. And it's like, give me a break. And you know, Jim it's probably like knows too. Every every <laughs> Thursday, you're Fuck you're you, Chad. you're going through this. You're having a fight with Chad. And and you make our Thursdays every every Thursday a pain in the ass, and then then he all he has to do is say one thing to her, and, and our entire done. weekend's she's gone. <laughs> yeah, entire That's weekend's it, gone. I'm totally done, Chad. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, you know. With me, it's like she kept my sister up last night. Destroy. She was destroying her room over Chad. It's because he's emotionally abusive, and she needs to get the fuck rid of him. Pretty much. Anyways, yeah, she I'm needs not, to be you know, rid of I'm that not, I'm not going to. Seriously. Uh, deal I've with been that. there. I've done that. Seriously, dude. Yes, we don't want to spend our time doing that, but. She needs to get fuck rid of him because we've been there, done that, etc. He's oh, we've to, you know, the thing is we that we've to told her him. for months. We've told her yeah. for months. You know, if if this guy's going to be abusive, verbally abusive and stuff, and push your buttons, why don't you just break up, find some other guy that's that's better? Jen, what do you think? About this fucking Chad bitch. And that, um, that person needs to be out of her life because they're obviously just not, you know. Yeah. Not healthy. No, it's they're it's, just making it's her life not, worse. Mm -hmm. No, it's not healthy, and you know, Jim you knows. can't, you can't, you, you know, I can't, you know. I've been there. Yeah. My Me my too. my niece don't want to listen to me. Bye, Chad. No, nope. you know, my sister don't, don't want to listen to but me you know either. What? You can let him go and let shit go, and then shit's gonna happen. Oh yeah. But we're there. We're trying to you know circumference this. But guess what? It's the same fucking toilet paper roll. It's gonna happen the way shit. it does. I'll, I'll I'll tell you something. I went through a five year relationship. Where I went through hell. This woman drag, drugged me through everything. She was, she ended up, she was, at the end, she was cheating on me for a year and a mm -hmm. half. 
And she informed me of this three days before she was going to marry the guy that she was cheating on me for. Three years. I mean, three days. And then her three days, whole thing years, is same her whole thing shit. is we can either be friends or not. You know, it's no. up to you. And it's like Yeah. No. You know, that's when you cut it off. No, yeah. We're not. That's 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 literally when you cut it off. And it's like, you know, and she goes, you know, well, I'm not I'm not a bad person because and it's like, no, uh, I'm yeah, I, you are. yes, you are a bad person. You are you cheated on me. I did nothing to you. But the thing is that I was stuck. I was stuck in this relationship, literally stuck, because she was the only one that was going to give me the time of day at the at that time. So what oh, ended she... up happening, you know, I mean, seriously, this woman, she uh, went out to dinner with with one of my friends' boyfriends. Oh no. The the friend that friend in question, she had a quote unquote open relationship with her boyfriend. And I told her, Well, tell Alex to stay away from my, my girlfriend. And she goes, I'm not going to do that. I have an open relationship. And I said, Well, I don't oh, have an you. open relationship and I don't yeah. appreciate him coming, you know interfering with my relationship and I said if you don't then I'm going to fucking beat this little fuck down period you no, want exactly. you want your boyfriend in the hospital then just keep you know let him let him keep doing this shit anyways I did that friendship uh because of my dear uh scary Mary that's that was right? her name, Scary Mary, <laughs> or at least that's my nickname for her now, Scary Mary. Scary but anyways, Mary. She, yeah, and then then she dragged me out to this. Uh, oh, you're gonna love this story, Tessa. You're really gonna love this story. She she tells me, oh well, I I want you to go with me to this. Um, to this club because they're showing an art uh, exhibit. And I'm going, nice. oh, okay. Sounds good to me. You're going to love it. Uh, guess what, Tessa? It was an S&M bar. Oh, wow. Yeah. S&M bar that, and it was S&M artwork. And I was thrilled because she didn't want to leave. And I'm sitting there going, excuse me. And then she ends up on the dance floor with this big old muscle Man, guy. Man muscle guy wearing shorts. And I'm like stuck at this place because she was my ride. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was my relationship with well, Mary. I'll be back because I have to go to the bathroom. But Jen is in the house, so you and Jen talk. Oh, Jen, Jen is in the house. Okay, Jen. We're having I'm I'm having technical difficulties, but I'm here. You're oh, having you're technical here. difficulties, but I have to go pee really quick. So okay, well go. Over? I can I Run. can entertain him. Run okay, so go. that you don't. Oh my God! It's it's. You know, poor Tessa. Right. So, anyways, any, 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 any comments on 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 the S and M bar thing? Oh my god! Well, I'm honestly just listening because if I listen, I'm I'm the type to listen because if I listen, I can add more input on what's being said. You know. Okay. Well, anyways, yeah. I mean. Believe it or not, this woman, she takes me to this S&M bar and refuses to leave. And we end up, we didn't leave until 3 o'clock in the morning. We got there at 8 o'clock at night. That's crazy. And 
amazingly enough, she comes up to me with this with this guy in in the sh leather shorts, uh, you know, uh, big big old nasty nasty ass leather boots on, and she goes, "Oh well, he he asked me if I'd like to come home with him. Should I?" No, if you don't know him, no. And I go, no. I go, I go. Well, you know what, Mary? Why don't you just do that? And I will walk out of this this pit of iniquity, and I will walk the streets of San Francisco at late at night, at like one o'clock in the morning, and. Try to find Mission Street so that I can catch a bus home. You really want that? And she goes, "Oh no, I guess not, because because you'll be angry at me." I go, "Oh really? You you don't think I'm angry at you right now?" <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, yeah. people go to the bar and then they expect to freaking meet up with someone. You know, if you don't know that person, don't go home with them because they could be psychopaths. You know, you never know. Exactly. And the thing is, if you've gone to the bar with somebody, a.k.a. your boyfriend, you don't sit there and go, oh, well, he, he wanted me to go go with him. What do you think? Of course, this is the same woman... Who on our first Valentine's Day, you're gonna love this. This I I do not even you know you know I I don't understand how you know I I understand actually I do understand now how people in abusive relationships can get stuck because I was stuck on this one. But anyways, first Valentine's Day. Just to give you the wonderful story of my first Valentine's Day with Scary Mary. She goes and well, I should I should add this little detail. Uh, a week before, she asked me to come over to her apartment and help her clean up the apartment for her. And while I was cleaning, I found a Valentine's Day card. Absolutely beautiful Valentine's Day card with a with an angel on it and all this and you know I'm going oh she got me a Valentine's Day card huh oh that's nice so here I'm expecting Valentine's Day shows up I'm expecting this wonderful Valentine's Day card and she gives me this, the envelope. I open it up, and the Valentine's Day card I got was an animated cat on there. And inside it says, Thanks for helping me clean up my apartment. It didn't say wow. any happy Valentine's Day, no, nothing. Now, for me, for for Val, you know, for Valentine's, I actually went went crazy for her, and I bought her a bouquet of red roses, a Ooh, teddy bear, right. box of chocolates, and I took her out to dinner. Now, at the yeah. time, I was in between jobs and I only had, you know, I spent pretty much most of my money on this. And, you know, I helped her out and all this. Turns out, I said, well, where, where's the uh, Valentine card uh, with the angel? And she goes, oh, I gave that to Richard. <laughs> Richard it was in fact Richard Ramirez 
the oh. serial killer. Well, I know she a different Richie, and he's more gorgeous Valentine's than that Day card dirty to Richard Ramirez. Yeah, her dirty Valentine. Ew. Yeah. So then a few days later, she comes back with heart-shaped candies and another Valentine for me. And it says, Happy Valentine's Day, Bill. And I mm. and I just went <clears throat> and I went like this and I went and ripped it in half and said, That's how much I appreciate it. You should I would have, have done, done the same. it right the first time. It's like, no, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, thank you. Cut, cut, cut. We're done. Yeah, so the rest of our relationship, I didn't give her any Valentine's Day stuff. What I did is I took the money that I was going to, you know, I worked, I worked at San Mateo uh, County Center and the, what I did is I bought flowers for the two receptionists. I gave them flowers because they were, they had been talking about how unhappy they were because they weren't going to get any flowers. So I went to San Mateo uh, Florist and I spent uh, $150 on, you know, individually made bouquets and sent them to them. With here, you know, said, here you go. Here, here's here's uh, uh, bouquets just for you. Right. And that was it. That's what I did for four years straight until until uh, until the breakup. I did it every year. And. Mary goes, oh, you're not going to get me anything for Valentine's Day? No. no. And I said, no fucking way. <laughs> go I fuck said, yourself. I said, why don't, why don't you go and have Richard send you, send you a Valentine card? Seriously? No, he won't. Yeah. Like Richard Ramirez? Oh, yeah, Richard Lord. Ramirez. Oh, no. no, the thing is that what she would do is she'd go down there and and he actually would sneak in needles and stuff and poke her in the hand with yeah, it. Yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah, and it's like, oh, oh, and Tessa, you're going to love this. The guy that she cheated on me, cheated on me with and married... Was Richard Ramirez's cousin? Probably. Yeah, no, it was. It was his his cousin Juan. Juan, a million to Juan. Yeah. So, anyways, as I said, you know, that's my inspiration for for my next story that I'm working on anniversary. Okay. So we do have Jen here, and poor Jen, she's been listening to all of this shit, Jen. What do you think? I think it's crazy, honestly. It is. Right? It's like... It, yeah. It's like, I was supposed to be your Valentine, and then you went on and uh, sent this ridiculous fucking person who you... It's like, why? Why would you even do that? No, you weren't supposed to be my Valentine, but um, no, you know. I just wanted you to be a person to be like, okay, so here is Liam, and he's the writer for Camp Crystal Lake and Bloody Valentine, like something different, but yeah, like, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Seriously, well, it, and I'm it, trying to... you know, the thing is that what it, what it does is Having having situations like this, crazy ass shit like this, it helps me in my she's writing. Like, yeah, she's like, I'm supposed to be your Valentine. No, no, you're not. But if you were like, 
through this whole bloody gory thing, like, what the fuck do you think? I don't know. It's just fucking weird. Basically, she was ba basically expecting a positive ending through it all when there's not going to be one, period. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because um, I, found, I found out through a mm. friend that after she married Juan, she got kicked out of her apartment that she'd been in for 20 years. A million to Juan? And... Uh, the last time I ended up seeing Scary Mary, her hair had turned white. Oh, shit. Yes, that has happened. And Jen is still ginger. Look at her. She's so beautiful. And, She's and so my, ginger. <laughs> and my sister, oh, my God, my sister uh, said that she'd seen her a few times. And she said every time she saw her, you know, she she go to like TJ Maxx or something, and she have <laughs> you know she'd have her hands full of clothes, and all of a sudden she'd just drop them on the floor and head for the head for the door. That's fucked up. T -t 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 TJ Maxx, no. Yeah, because That's because she was afraid Jen. of my sister. Oh my god, no. It's nothing like that. It's just like, what the fuck? There's my sister, Jen. There's my daughter. I thought it's it was hilarious. To do with that is funny. But just yeah. like her being here now, like coming in. Being, being intimidated by my sister. And here the thing is, at the time, my sister wouldn't have even been able to, uh, to chase after her because my sister had had... Uh, back surgery and she could barely walk she she walks with a cane now but right. mary the moment she sees her <laughs> runs like hell Seriously. it's hilarious it's I'm hilarious just waiting for my best friend to come in here because if she comes in she's gonna tear everybody up one side and down the other really um yeah uh she is hardcore and um okay so she met her old man and he was a marine corps guy and yeah seriously if she does it she'll be up one side and down the other but i don't know if she's gonna come in she might be sleeping right now who knows oh okay and i've invited several people in here but we'll see what happens but jen i'm sorry you feel that way like i don't know I just thought you were here to be like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking, you know, come in, try this guy up, whatever. So is the po know. is the podcast over? Or... Wait. But, yeah, the main one is as far as like um the whole Spreaker broadcast. We were already over minutes, so that shit was gone down the tubes. But we have other things going on. Which, thank you for reminding me about that. I need to end that. Okay. Uh, why I was asking is because I gotta, I gotta go use the restroom. <laughs> well, definitely do. Go do that, and then we'll come back. Yeah, I'll, I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> See you soon, brother. Hi. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Trying to. <laughs> I know. How's it been going? Like, I know you've lost your grandparents and everything else like that. Like, It's been rough, but I'm hanging in there. Knees. You're so strong. So are you still doing, like, um, casework or working with people? Or what, did, what are you doing in... I'm so I'm still a caregiver. Like, yeah, me too. And it's hard. Like, um, my brother Matt, he's like, man, that work is so hard. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, because yeah. these people have Alzheimer's, they have dementia, and you have to know the right things to say, or you <laughs> you like tick them off. You know, it's not easy. Well, it's like that too, but like for me, this girl is younger than me and um, she's just very like self-centered and 
she's a kleptomaniac, so it's just like, I told her, if you keep fucking stealing and doing the shit that you're doing, I can't, I can't keep taking care of you. So she's like, hey, how about you go over here and do what you need to do, um, and I'll go over here and do what I'm doing. I'm back. And it's like, welcome back. Ugh. It's like you I said, know. unblock. Good, then I don't have He's to uh, sit. I don't have to sit uh, the way I was. Because the thing is, when I was on the podcast, I was sitting with my one leg up and <laughs> on top of the bed. And I was getting yeah, Charlie you horses be like in my this. legs. You can like turn around and be like this or. I can picture that leg. one leg in the air. How the fuck know? you need to be. <laughs> yeah, it hurts a lot. It hurts hurt like hell but i was trying to you know make sure that i had you know that that i didn't look awkward on the screen unfortunately i did look kind of awkward <laughs> now you're all good however you need to be nobody's saying that, that anyway so. whatever yeah here, there, everywhere. Which is which good. is funny because uh, you know when I do bloodbath theater, brown I brown cow. I you yeah. know I have to sit like <laughs> like that too. You know when I'm doing the intros and outros and the trivia on bloodbath theater, yeah. So now mm. you know, I uh, you know some people think I'm sitting in a chair, but I'm not. I'm sitting on my bed. With my leg up, and it's like, oh god. But look at Jen. How is she? She looks like a wonderful dish. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, uh, Tessa, did did we get any cyber stalkers in in the chat? Uh, we did for a while who was talking about that and then he was very upset about the whole Jesus thing and Oh, okay, I Francis. Francis. I didn't yes. I didn't think of him as a as a cyber stalker because cyber stalkers no, are a little bit different. No, and then he was trying Yeah, and he was trying to understand your cyber stalker. He's like, "Oh, well, is it somebody stalking you like this and this and that and that?" No. It was nothing like that. So can you explain to our listeners what your fucking cyber stalker was? Cause he didn't understand. I tried. I tried to explain that the thing is, is it just a bunch of petty people? Um, mm -hmm. like the person who shit? actually started uh, this big rash of cyber stalking was this. You're you're gonna be, you're gonna be amazed. This was before the Gen. And Sylvia Soska thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a guy named Danny Carnage, and the thing is that he started being obnoxious with me, and I cut him off. I I blocked him on my uh, Facebook profile, and all of a sudden, he his brother. Goes and shows up on my, you know, friend. I I end up friending him. I didn't didn't know who he was because he has a different last name, and all of a sudden he's, all of a sudden I find out through him that oh, they're doing a they did a website called devourmyfootlong.com. <laughs> And um, both of these guys are from England, and the whole reason it's like, why they my call my sister Jen .com. Come on, <laughs> they they go. Um, you know the reason why they did the devour my foot long thing was because on my uh, YouTube I had done a review of Subway. Yeah, and Jake, like, fuck that guy, child molester and rapist, etc. Uh, but look, there's Jen right there. She's beautiful. Right She's there. Gorgeous. Right okay. there, right there. Over yonder. <laughs> and Over yonder. anyway, so. In the tenor phase. So they started 
doing this blog. And then they opened a a Facebook group called the Haters of William Patterson. What the fuck? Hey, and I'm anyone to do my who had the smallest little uh, thing with me, and what what's amazing is that this one person who made me aware of this site, well, of this of this uh, group. Uh, her name was uh, Rebecca Herzberg. Oh, well, where are you, Rebecca? Anyways, Rebecca, she informed me because, and, and here's the thing, we used to get, you know, we used to go after each other because of the fact that she was a feminist, and I'm not a feminist. And yeah, she was either. part of a an organization called Women in Horror. And Women in Horror, their, their mission statement, which they put on their website, is that they wanted to give recognition to uh, women artists in horror that weren't getting uh, recognition. And I was all for that when, when they started out. I mean, shit. My my dear friend Debbie Rochon, the uh, you know the queen of 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 scream queens, uh, she was one of the the ones that started this thing. And right. what ended up happening is she walked out on it because it the ones the members were starting to self promote instead of helping other women. And Rebecca was high up on this. And, you know, because I criticized him saying that, you know, you're not you're not doing uh, what your mission statement said. You know, you're yep. sitting there and your members are self-promoting themselves and they've already they're already well-known uh, female actresses and stuff in horror. And, you know, you've got Jen and Sylvia Soska, who every oh, year on the Not thing, the Soska, they, sisters. they put out, they, they do this blood drive that's supposed to be for, for women of horror, but instead they're promoting like them. themselves. They're literally promoting themselves in mm. WWE films. Yeah, I fucking hate those guys. For for a charity that's supposed to be about, you know, giving helping women in horror. Anyways, I I you know I I criticized that and so uh Rebecca was always on me. Well eventually women in horror went through some horrible situations where uh, a gentleman named uh, God, what what was his name? Tom Gleba, Gleba. went and um, attacked Gleba. women in horror. Tom Gleba. Women in horror's uh, website trashed it, hacked it, trashed it, and then went on to all the membership, found the membership of women in horror. And attacked their Twitter sites. But look at this lovely lady we have right now. Like, what? 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 And what ended up happening is that he attacked a whole bunch of things. Um, yes. Before he was finally taken down, anyways. But yes. after that, yeah. women in horror decided that they needed to go by their mission statement, and I was fine. I started to help it. You know, I started supporting them in that. But Rebecca kept going, oh, well, you know, you, you can't, you, you, you shouldn't uh, say anything about women in horror and stuff. And I'm going... What do you mean? Again, I'm supporting them. She should be like one of the number one, uh, you know, matriarchs in the business right there. Look at her. She's so Fuck beautiful yeah. and lovely and 
like running for her fucking life, you know, she should be a member of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, what end what ended up happening is that Rebecca joined this group. Here we here we were in good stead with each other, and for some reason, she joined this group of haters of me. And what she ended up doing is she left. She left after a month because these people who were, you know, just people who had little petty, petty things against me, they Mother decided Marcus. that they were going to destroy me. And yes, so the Soska they started. Sisters and who oh else? no, no! Actually, Jen and Sylvia Soskas were not involved with that. They were at first, and you said so. But then that changed. I said I said that after I blocked them, that their Soska army attacked me. But this yeah. is something totally different. The cyber stalkers are now something it's totally me different. Dizzy. Could be the mushrooms. I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, but yes, you said the Soska sisters, and you said other people, and I'm like, what the fuck? And even this one person that was saying he was you. Yeah. Oh, no, no. There there was several people who went around saying that they were me and causing yeah. things. And this person, these people, even went and sent dick pictures to Jen and Sylvia Soska using dick my pictures. name. Yeah. Nice. Sent dick pictures and sent them horrible messages. I wouldn't even talk to Jen and Sylvia uh you know after after I blocked them. Uh um, no, seriously and I even said things to them. I'm like, how dare you guys do that to my friend? I don't understand because like you have been the writer and this and this and that and that. You've been Eric Morris or whoever the fuck you were towards the end and they were just like fighting against you and, and using a different name. So which was this other name that they were using? No, they were using my name. Uh, they also... Eric Morris? Yeah, they were using Eric Morris. Uh, the thing is that the, that the ones in this group, they would go around and use fake profiles. So mm -hmm. they'd, they'd go by my name, they'd go by my pen name, They'd go by my sister's name, by my niece's name. They'd go by Harlan Ellison's name after he died. They they go uh, saying that they're Felicia Day, who's a friend of mine. You know, they they say say that they were uh, Joshua Larue. Or saying that saying that they were my associate uh, Derek Young, and they'd actually go to people. I mean, there was a couple of people in the Wolf Pack. Um, uh, oh. one, one of one of my one of my associates there. He he. Uh, what happened with him was that he he got back into music and he wanted to leave, but. He, you know, he didn't want to give me any trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, so anyways, he he started this. He started trying to find little nitpicky things to go after me. And what ended up happening is I ended up having to blacklist uh, Kane Hodder on, on my show. Because Kane oh. Hodder, uh, associate uh, author Mike, had uh -huh. on four separate occasions uh, had had it that Kane was going to be on our show, and each time within hours before the show was supposed to come on. Jen, you're muted. I know. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. But anyways, I'm just listening. Already, uh, you know, like within four hours before the show's supposed to go on, and this was when I was at Blog Talk Radio, 
and doing live. He would, he, author Mike would come on. Oh, well, Kane's not coming to the show. And he did this four times. And one time, author Mike didn't come back to us. And we had to call him in, about two hours before the show was supposed to start. And it's like, oh, no, he's not co coming. So luckily, I ended up a friend of mine, Manoush decided that you know she had come from just come off of um, okay so doing a three hour concert yeah, and so but she it's came crazy on my show like i try to go on the show all this other shit like i just realized i have fractures like in my teeth like this tooth and then my canine and the other one it's fucking weird but she's beautiful, and she could actually be a person in this series. Like, Jen could be somebody running from Jason, and her negligee, she'd be like, ah! Like, don't catch me, okay. Jason. I'd probably Look be a lot her. more dramatic than that, but yeah. She could be a lot more beautiful <laughs> than I. You know, here I am with this fucking heart monitor on me and shit. Like, she can actually be... Now you look fine. Yeah. yeah well. You're all beautiful just the way you are. Pretty much. Yeah, but you're younger and hotter, and I could see Jason Voorhees chasing you through the woods. Yeah, he wouldn't chase Can't me but one Lake. time. <laughs> Can't Chris well, Lake, where the fuck? <laughs> if if they ever if they ever get the you know, the movies going again, you know, you might have a chance. I know it's insane. Either it's like, that it or kind of came to a dead end, right? It's like what the fuck's yeah, going to happen now, next? Yeah, now the thing is that fans are creating uh, films. You know, I and just, I'm like, I, look just at Jen. I just, I just finished the next new watching. Flick, bitch, seriously. I just finished watching a fan-made film called Friday the Thirteenth Vengeance, and it was all fan-made and. You know, you had fan fan <laughs> actors and that and a few a few famous people from the series actually helped out and were it was in it. Yeah, so Jen would totally be a perfect heroine. Okay, cool. Okay. She's beautiful. Look at her. She's beautiful. She's young. Look at the long flowing hair. She loves to wear her negligee. I'm like chase Jen through the woods. Like I could do it, but I'd be like, you know, not actually, to actually, if if I was if Chase I me. had been able to cast cat cast be fun. her, probably she would be Kelly Boone in uh, Jason Jason's Curse, which <laughs> is um, which is the second of my books. And and I was a, uh, when I was reading like Jason Voorhees Mother's Day like. I kept smiling because I remembered seeing that picture of Jason hugging his old mother and it was so fucking cute. I was just like, I couldn't help but smile because I remember seeing that picture. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, one, the one with uh, him and the, the lady that played uh, Mrs. Voorhees. Oh, yeah, original. she was so cute. I was just like, oh, my God. Yeah, Jason Voorhees, Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. He's running He's away. No, I'm not. Well, I'm, st I'm standing pain. up. He's outstanding in his field. No, I'm standing because I got a Charlie horse in my leg. <laughs> Those hurt. Yeah, they do. And I need to... Punch, punch, punch. Uh, I need to stand up for a few moments. Anyways, yeah. So, you know... <clears throat> You know, I would no, I, but I love that picture of like uh Jason Voorhees Mother's Day. I'm like, I love that picture, like that's one of my favorites. Oh yeah, Mother's yeah. The Day. the one that they put out on Mother's Day, that was Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's my favorite. I'm like, Oh my gosh, she looks so happy. And yeah, she, that was she, the uh, original actress. Unfortunately, believe it or not, she hated being Mrs. Voorhees. She mm, thought no. she thought that it was then. she thought it was a you know kind of uh you know a low grade <sighs> role 
for her. What? And Are you serious? Like, yeah. me? That'd be yeah, a high grade role for it me. It took her years to actually start appreciating it. And the only reason why she appreciated it was because of the fans. That the fans would see her at conventions and talk to her and stuff. And that, and she's like, eh, okay. Well, eh, I guess I No, I, I guess love I that do. picture. It's like Happy Mother's Day and that yeah, woman that was, was there. Yeah, that was a later, that was a later what? time. That was when she finally accepted. Oh I love that picture. Yeah, that was when she finally accepted. Do you know that, what picture we're talking about, Jen? That cute uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cute. Well... She's I'm sorry, like, oh, I am listening. Jason Voorhees. And she's like, ah. <laughs> I am listening, but it sounds like my dog's in there tearing stuff up, but I am listening to y'all. Oh, oh okay. No problem. Good. I can multitask. <laughs> yeah, same, same with me. <laughs> it's important. Also, um, you're an Arthur. I'm also a blog writer and a poetry writer. So Nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I, I do feel poetry, like poetry too. I do poetry too. I actually poetry is how I express myself, and my pain is through my poetry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. I put I put out uh, for Valentine's Day. I posted a poem that I did. <laughs> Hilarious. Could you share it with us? Oh. Okay. I'll. F find it in my uh thing here your Hold eyes on. are so pretty oh thank you you're welcome let's see if i can find it <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go i'll have to get it big here so that i can read it because my eyes are really bad. It, it's from. Uh, Mine too. It's I from. Think I have uh, conjunctivitis. With my arthritis. Uh, okay, I guess I, I guess I'm gonna have to be like Captain Kirk and go. Oh damn. Oh yes. Please read it like Captain Kirk. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> no, what I'm Ooh. saying is because be, having to wear the damn glasses. Um, mm, I hate glasses. Okay. <laughs> I have to wear Okay, here we go. Here we go. My Valentine. I'm tired of living like a blind man. I'm sick of my lack of sight and existing without feeling. I would never make it as a wise man and wouldn't cut it as a beggar with a bowl. This is because of my feelings for you. It's not like you would ever say you're sorry for leaving. I waited for a different story, but that would never arrive. I was mistaken for handing someone like you a heart worth breaking, and breaking it you did. Now I know I was wrong. I've been down for so long, been to the bottom of sorrow. I've learned my lesson now. Words in my head scream in silence and will never be released. My shattered heart screams as we are. Uh, my shattered heart screams, are we having fun yet? Well, you love the show? It's not like you hear me. I mean, it's like you, it's not like you didn't hear me say I love you. And we both know I still do. And, and we must have been so bad because. You didn't stay and left me in pain alone. There we go. Who broke your heart? Yep. Yeah. And you're still working for that. And she's still like, yeah. 
bring me dinner yeah. or something. I don't know. She's still longing for something. No, that was that was for my first girlfriend. I had been with her for three years, and then she went to England for a you know to be in a movie. And then said that she was going to be uh, hanging around a little bit longer, you know, to to go and check out the country. And anyways, well, to me, it was like didn't uh, find find her for about eight years. Really. Cool. Yeah, because it, like, instead of rhyming and all this other stuff, like, being like a limerick, it was, like, something else. I don't know. Yeah. What did you feel, Jen? Did you feel like it was a poem or limerick or what the fuck did you feel like it was? I just felt pain in that. Haiku. Sounds like, yeah. sounds like he was going There's through some stuff. Haiku? Yeah, kind of like a haiku. Mm -hmm. Because haikus, you don't, uh, you don't rhyme have to rhyme. Anything. Yeah, it's a haiku. Damn. Yeah. Well, the thing is that I also used to write limericks, too. I like limericks. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Jen. Jen's like, I'm getting so tired of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're <laughs> fine. I was, no, I wasn't. I got nothing to do She's with you. Like, <laughs> I'm on my iPad, and notifications keep coming into the, this and my phone. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, like, I'm trying to. You're the dragon, and we're like the little leprechauns. You are like the leprechauns breathing out fire. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're talking, I'm picturing your brains like watermelons. Oh, that's interesting and I'm intriguing. Just playing. <laughs> oh, it's actually, kind of making me dizzy actually, right now. You want? I'm kidding. To you want me to read you something, I'll I'll read you the opening to uh, to my prologue. You're that the I'm right. No, it's because like I ate some mushrooms and so I'm trying to uh, get some extra oxygen in. So it's not that I'm bored, I'm I'm just trying to breathe more. But yes, I want to hear your prologues, what you're talking about. Mr. Pattinson. Yeah, the prologue, the opening for uh, the prologue that I'm working mm -hmm. on for it's not book that I'm five. Bored. I'm just trying to breathe more. I'm like, yeah. For book five, I'm not going to read all of it, you know, all of the work because it's like, you know, I'm, I, I've i got like 13 pages yeah, for that, sure. that I've written on that. But that um, way, that way you get a chance to rain, rain. to hear what I'm what I'm working on. Yeah, for sure. Okay, prologue: The Agreement by William Patterson, dedicated to Dante, Clive Barker, Neil Gaiman, and Rice. Oh, and Anne Rice for taking on the incredibly difficult task of providing us with unique visions of hell and its occupants. Oh my goodness. Human souls are the bedrock of our society in hell since mm -hmm. we demons achieved our full demonic forms after the energy released by the birth of Lucifer's children, the Furies, mutated us from our angelic forms. Unfortunately, after the birth energy started to fade, we found out, unlike our angelic form, which subsists on celestial energy, our demonic forms did not. Thankfully, our father, whom you call God, became unhappy with humanity and flooded the earth, sparing only a select few humans he judged to be worthy of survival. Of course, he had to find a place to send all those damned human souls who had drowned in the flood 
So, like a storm of meteors, they all showered down on hell. Hold on, I gotta get this down a little bit more. Okay. Amusingly, all of us demons still held anger and resentment toward the humans because after their creation, our father demanded that all angels kneel and vow to serve and protect his new creations, mm -hmm. which he considered his masterpiece. Bow our, down and kiss my ass. Our Lord Lucifer was offended by this and considered it to be an insult to the angelic race. He stood up to the Father, which led to a war in heaven. In the end, Lucifer and all of us who supported him were defeated. Mm -hmm. We were all damned to the wastes of Hades, which was what hell was called during that time. Our wings, mm -hmm. damn it. Sorry. They were shattered and splintered. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. Our wings burned from our backs as we fell into this land to keep us from trying to escape. It was Lucifer who suffered the greatest penalty of all because of his betrayal of the Father. Lucifer, who had been the firstborn angel and most beautiful, had his skin so burned to a crisp and permanently disfigured. And not only was he the most beautiful angel, but he was the angel of music, the angel of light, so many things. Yeah. After the damned human souls fell, we soon found out that when we tried to kill the humans who had reformed back into physical forms after landing, they would instantly regenerate and release life energy. This energy we found was compatible with us and we could feed upon it to restore our own life energies. I was actually offered leniency due to the fact that in the last battle of the War of Heaven, I was uh, nearly mortally wounded and was in the middle of healing. My brother Angel, the Archangel Uriel, cut out my left eye, sliced Uriel my yes. right arm, and savagely hacked uh, my leg with his angel blade. Yeah, he has no repentance, no nothing. Like, he knows what his existence is. No matter what, he's going to do what he needs to do. Yeah. Lucifer, he, he's the angel <clears throat> of music and um, light and all this other shit. Like, mm. Okay, one question so I understand. Is this a poem that you wrote or your book, part of your book? I think it's, it's part of my right? book. Yeah. I thought so. Uh, I was like... With his, I'm trying not to interrupt, but I'm like... Oh. He also impaled me through my rib cage with a spear he grabbed from a fallen uh, soldier angel. The father offered to forgive me and allow me to stay in heaven and heal if I vowed allegiance to the humans. I refused because I had already vowed my allegiance to my Lord Lucifer. Mm -hmm. The father told me that if I fell in my current condition, my wounds would never heal and I would be damned to be crippled and in constant pain for the rest of my existence. I told him I would rather live in pain than live with the dishonor of breaking my vow to my Lord Lucifer. 
the father understood and reluctantly damned me to Hades. Amusingly, even with my disabilities, Lucifer made me his chief organizer. Later, though, once we found out that torturing human souls enhanced the energy when, we re when they regenerated, Lucifer made me his master torturer. By the way, I am Glencoe Rexius Diablo. BTW. Formerly Messenger Angel of Heaven, Glaniel. But yeah. in more modern times, I'm simply known as Glenn. What? My Lord Lucifer figured with my close relationship with pain, I would have an understanding of it and how best to utilize it to create the best results in regard to the torture of humans. I did not disappoint him. I took all my pain and focused it on finding what caused humans extreme pain, yet extended their experience to its utmost effect and maximized the energy release. I trained and shared my knowledge with my fellow torture demons, earning their respect and as much loyalty as can be expected from the, our kind. Our torture picks took up most of the land between communities. The screams of agonies of billions of human souls were a symphony to our ears that echoed on the wind. From the capital city of Pandemonium to the far colony of Fire Edge, it could be heard. It was a glorious sound. It was comparable to the choirs of angels who flew around the heavenly city singing uh, singing, but not so joyful. This is crazy because I'm. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. No. What? What? No. Continue. Okay. Says nothing, breath to what you're saying. Oh, okay. Over the next two million years, hell time, my torture demons and I reveled in the desecration of flesh and the bringing of pain. We feasted on the energy of damned human souls as well as drank their blood and consumed their flesh on occasion. They, their used up husks. Hold on. I got to fix this. Okay. Good thing I ch did this. They used up husks that were all that remained when the soul's energies had were, were practically used up, would no long and would no longer regenerate, were hung above the land on a massive spider web of chains and hooks. The blood from these scraps of flesh, muscle, and bone would drop on the land below, creating a continuous blood rain, which still contained the tiniest bit of life force. Uh, waste. Uh, life force waste uh, refreshed us as we tirelessly labeled labored, waste not. Anyway, so that, that's part of that. She's dropping stuff. Yeah, I am. I just uh, dropped my finger now. But continue. No, like, uh, the reading and everything, like, that's epic. 
Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, so... Your book definitely sounds interesting. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, it's, I've, I've had to do a lot of research on, on the mythology of heaven and hell. You know, reading up a little bit on Dante and that, and even going uh, to some of the more popular images like Clive Barker's Labyrinth and that. <laughs> yeah, these things are running away from me, but... <laughs> no, that shit's pretty awesome. For real. Yeah, so... Anyways, Tessa, what did you think? I don't know. It's, um, I've enjoyed it. I think it's pretty awesome. And, um, I don't know. It makes you want to delve into it more, wants you to discover more. And, yeah, I think you're doing a really good job at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we get into this uh, situation later on in the story where um, uh, Glencoe is given <laughs> uh, a report by his managing demons that says that uh, that they're that. Um, the number of damned souls is decreasing while the population of hell is growing. Mm -hmm. You know, because female demons and male demons are having sex and, you know. Well, and what makes me crazy releasing is the hell fact spot. that we thought there was so many demons, whether they be uh, male or female or whatnot. There are innumerable amounts of them, and they outnumber oh, yeah. what we thought they were in the first place. Like we thought it was a small amount. Guess what? There's a huge amount out there. It's insane. Well, you you look at you look at uh, the mythology. Uh, Lucifer, when he went to war on heaven, a third of Hell's or a third of heaven's angels joined him, and it's a third of the host, a third of the amount of the host. That's a very small fraction, and it's amazing to consider there's innumerable amounts of them, and they've been there even before we were considered as hosts on the earth. Yeah, and the thing is that when they get to um, hell, <laughs> the uh, thing is that, you know, there's, you know, um, Lilith, the uh, queen of hell, you know, the first woman, Adam's first wife. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Lilith was. Yeah, Lilith was his first wife. And the thing was, the thing is that uh, God created, uh, you know, Eve after. Mm -hmm. And As an Lilith. After effect, yes. Yeah, well, Lilith got sent uh, to purgatory. Fuck that. Yeah. And an. And the thing is that what happened was that Lucifer was enamored of her, which is well, amazing yes, because, because she was originally Adam's side, and then she got cast away because she's like, "No, I'm not going to do this." Yeah. And so Lucifer is like, "Hey, who's that bitch?" And he was. Well, intrigued. the thing He's was like, that hmm. Lucifer admired her. Yes, because, because she was a lot like him. Yeah. Very free, 
willing. And anyway, mm -hmm. so what ends up happening is that Lucifer goes and breaks Lilith out of uh, purgatory. And God, in his anger for this act, goes and orders all the angels to kneel, including <laughs> Lucifer, to the humans. Mm-hmm to his new creation, which he thinks is fantastic. But the uh, the angels, they actually see, see humans as flawed because humans are part animal and they are not made from celestial energy. But the thing is that what uh, the angels don't know is the prime thing that uh, God gave humans was that he gave them a little piece of his creative energy, you know, because God is the avatar of creation. Right. So he gave them creative energy. Yes, they are half animal. Yes, they are, you know, what, what the... Uh, Angels call mud people because they were made of the earth, but they have a piece of God in them. And whereas angels cannot dream, humans can. And whereas angels are ha, do not have the creative spark. You know they can they can do stuff they can create stuff but they have to be told to create it and shown mm -hmm. to create it whereas humans can create on our own and the thing is that lucifer do doesn't think, know that and the thing I is know. that and he's like he's the creator of music and light and everything else and he yeah, such because, a spirit. because guess what? He's Lucifer upset. was the prototype angel, and God not only gave him celestial energy, but he also gave him a piece of the creative energy as well. So right. Lucifer is different from his brothers in, you know, and the other cherubim. Because he is a cherubim, he is uh, he is part of the heavenly choir. You know, he's master of of music and that, and art and all this. He is excessively creative. But on top of this, what people do not realize is that Lucifer, during the time of creation. He was actually God's Correct. conscience, because God is a because God is an artist, and a lot of artists do not go by their conscience on stuff. But Lucifer, during those times, was his conscience. He was the one who was saying, uh, "I don't know on this. I don't know on this." Totally and, off topic, but do you guys have Netflix? Well, if you do, you should watch Lucifer. Oh, God. I yeah, I. Lucifer. Yeah, I watched man. all of them. Because I've re watched them over was, and over again. I was so intrigued that I had to binge watch it. And yes. Oh, my Definitely. sister, my sister loves Lucifer and she watches it over and over and over again. <laughs> No, I'm she not that upset. Yeah. Neither am I with any with any show. Um but yeah, he's totally different. You know, the Lucifer in the in the television series Lucifer is totally different from uh Neil Gaiman's Lucifer. Um yeah, totally different from the comic book. Because I read the comic book. <laughs> And he's totally different. And you know, if if you ever watch Sandman, 
Lucifer is a lot, a holy lot different. Um, no, the way he was, as far as like acceptance and judgment, he was very judgmental. Oh yeah, very much more judgmental than you would be as a regular spirit. But oh yeah, Lucifer very much was because of the fact that, as I said during creation, he was God's. Uh, conscience mm -hmm. and the problem was that after god created the world and that at one point lucifer you know when when he you know this was after god created the jinn as well because oh, yes, you know god is yeah god created the jinn but then he wanted to create something from the earth you know, uh, beings, you know, his masterpiece. And Lucifer was earth, very critical. Different. Yeah, he was very critical because, you know, you have, you have the uh, angels, which he, you know, he, he thinks they're the top of the line. You have the oh, angels, and, you know. which... And are celestial so because they feel like we were chosen above them when in reality we're not you no know, they were the only difference chosen. we're after we're the after effect yeah we are we are god's experiments going to a certain level i mean he you know he kind you know he did the angels and then turned them into servants. He experimented with the jinn, and they <laughs> they pushed away from him because they were so different. And they had fire. They were made of fire. Mm -hmm. Humans. What he likes, uh, you know, what God likes about humans is. That we are, you know, because we are uh, not perfect. Were you heavy breathing? Like, who was doing that? I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? I have no idea. But I heard that. Anyways, I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? But anyways, so that was that was the way it is. But anyways, I was, you know, anyways. I don't know. I, I kind of got off subject because I was talking about. See, I have a lot of background that gets that gets mixed in here. But anyways, they said, you know. Ah, uh, honey, you're fine. I was just trying to be funny. Everybody needs to laugh every now and then. You know, you're fine. Okay. You're good. You're not bothering me. I'm I'm content. Oh no 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 no! I wasn't even thinking about that. I just okay. oh my god! I had a lot of background things and i lost wow. yeah i went went over on the but anyway so the thing is that uh lilith got sent to hell with with lucifer and his people and lucifer and the problem is is in hell there are no plants there's no water there's nothing for a human to survive on Right. So Lucifer had to feed Lilith by giving her his roasted flesh on his body. Ew. And giving give her his blood. Well, what ended up happening is by doing that, he impregnated her with his energy. And that led to the creation of the Furies. Mm -hmm. And when the Furies were born, when they... It's kind there of like was fairies, a, but Furies. Yeah, these are little, small, demon-looking creatures. Well, anyways, when they were born, there was a massive energy release. And that ended up... That's what eventually mutated all of the 
fallen angels into demons, including Lucifer. And the thing is that uh, the fallen angels became more um, aggressive and more sexual. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when uh, Lilith gave birth to the Furies, she was destroyed. She was literally destroyed. She turned into ash. And Lucifer, yeah. later on, he brings her back to life. He uses a quarter of the energy of the Furies and brings Lilith back. But she's changed, too. She's been turned into a succubus slash incubus. Ew. And so she survives on sexual energy. And every time she satisfies her, her sexual energy, she gives birth. So every time she... Yeah, so Yeah, so she's constantly giving birth to different demons, different styles of demons. <laughs> right. Each one unique. So that's one of the reasons why the population of hell starts skyrocketing. That and the demons themselves are uh, are having sex and giving birth to little <laughs> demons, little hell spawns. They're like, we're trying. So that's what leads to eventually the... the uh, agreement between heaven, death, and hell, which leads to the symphony of death. Right. Because the problem is, is that if hell doesn't do something, uh, eventually they're going to reach a critical point where there's not going to be enough uh, damn souls to satisfy the hunger of all the demons. You know, and you can imagine how that would be. <laughs> I think I finally found it. The hunger of the demons. Here it is. It's, it's Lee Press on Nails. Weird. <laughs> I swear I've got some in there but I'm tempted to put super glue hmm. I know like that one just popped off and it's just like I even talked to my friend the other day I'm like mm, would uh, super glue work cause damn yeah super glue would work uh, don't try to use uh, a gorilla uh, super glue oh, though oh yeah gorilla glue that's hardcore yeah, well, shit. my sister tried to do that with her nails, and the problem is, is that oh, they never uh, came off. Gorilla Grip glue, uh, you have to hold it, hold the stuff in place for twenty-five minutes, and then it takes uh, twenty-four hours for it to fully bond. Damn. So this it's good. Like so it's good off. for for repairing stuff but it's not good for nails can't repair the fingernails with gorilla glue <laughs> and this shit is so crazy and hey, my, glue... my 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 sister did try and her her hey, nails kept you know, falling off she's a soldier <coughs> what if she talked but... about that shit like that's forever live yeah i know Fucking gorilla glue dude Oh, I love Gorilla Glue. I I like the other ones, but the but the uh, you know the Gorilla version of Crazy Glue is fucked. <laughs> yeah, this shit keeps popping off. It's like what what in the butt? Like what the hell is happening? It's yeah. like you put a thing on your fingernails and sparrows are flying away. 
Yeah, you need to uh, use the regular crazy glue. That's that's yeah, the one that you have to use that shit. Yeah, well, I've had I've had my fingers uh, stuck together. I know that one. That's scary. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's right up there with uh <laughs> fun stuff. Swing. I'm getting fidgety. You getting fidgety? Yeah. Don't get fidgety, Brigidy. <laughs> My ADHD kicks in. <laughs> Mm. I'm try I'll try to can you know I've done a lot I'm actually I'm actually a lot better at controlling it, you know. Good. But when I'm around people it gets really bad. Well, you're not around people, you're around me and uh Tessa. There's a big yeah. difference We're between hybrids. us and people. We're yes. We're very different, you know. Yeah, you forget I'm an author, I'm not a regular person. You know, well, according to my cyber stalkers, I'm not. You know, I'm. I'm you I'm know what about that? Going. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say something about that. Um, they only hate on you and shed that kind of light on you because they're jealous of what you do. Because exactly. they can't, they can't write a book better than what you've come up with. And if right. they read about it, they would know that it's interesting if they just put thought into it and read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I and they shouldn't judge someone because they're not God. So therefore, they shouldn't sit there and say that your book sucks when that you know they can't even fucking take time to read it. They can't. Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah, it was funny because Al Albertson. Oh my God! If you ever get a chance, check out that review. It is like you know. No, uh, if I check it out, I'm probably going to say something about it. <laughs> Good. Good, and you need to. <laughs> you know, I'm a very open book. I'm a very honest person, and I'll tell you how I fucking feel. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, she's I very mean, open because and honest. It, yeah, because I mean, I was honest with her. He's sitting there going, you know, oh, you know, I, I, I had, to, you know, I had to read it in two days because it was just too much for me to read. Okay, first off, so you bad. can't. You can't read something within two fucking days. Eh? My grandmother's been reading her book for about uh, five weeks depends, now. Because my dad was like, bling, 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 and he'd read a whole book. I'm like, are you fucking serious? You just read that shit? He's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Other people, it takes them a while. But yeah, he yeah, used to takes blow my mind. You know, He'd be like, ching, ching, With me, it's going to take me book. forever because my focus is not the best. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, I mean the book, you know, the book that he reviewed was only 169 pages. So it's not that bad. I mean, right. Tessa, well, Tessa, I sent I sent you a copy of uh of Shadow Man versus the Undead. Mhm. Mm yeah. So, so you know how how long it is. It's only like 169 pages, and it's not that hard to read. No, it's not. And like the easier it is to read, the faster it goes. So seriously, like uh, for some people, if they're uh, illiterate or whatnot, it could take a while. But yeah. if you're a good reader and you're really into the book, it only takes a little bit. It yeah. depends on uh, what's going on there. Seriously. Yeah, and and the uh, prologue story on that was only 19 pages. You know, it was Yeah, most... it wasn't a lot. Yeah, it it's was the wrap like an intro into the, like, I don't know if you've um, seen the new series on HBO. Um, but yeah, it's just like, holy shit. All this shit is happening, and it's crazy because they're talking about like mushroom people and shit like that. I'm like, are you fucking serious? This is a whole another catalog of shit happening. 
I don't know. Which one are I'm they? T- which one are they talking amazed. about? Mushroom. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, the yes. all, yeah, the the Last of Us. Yes. Yeah, based oh, based like, on the, the uh, video game. Yeah, and it's like if you if you kill them or you hurt them or whatever, like they're connected in a sort of hive, and so if you hurt one or kill one, it will alert the others. And then oh, they're okay. on to you. Well, that's a, and they that's know directly cool where name. you're at. Exactly. So it's kind of like a new sort of thing where it's like more intricate. And it's like, if you kill this one or hurt this one, they're connected in the hive and they know where the fuck you are. Which makes it scarier. They they did a little bit of that in Z-War. With the, with the, the zombies in that. Zombie. Zombie. Yeah, the um, the zombies in that had like a hive mind, and that's that's how they, you know, when they would attack, <laughs> they'd attack in groups. Well, yeah, it's like once this one gets hurt, then it goes down the line. It lets the other ones know what's happening, where they're at, etc. It's it's really weird. It's really mm. different because you'd think like you can kill one and be okay. But you kill one, and now it's connected to a hive, and so a lot come. And I actually had a nightmare like that the other night, maybe because, or perhaps, like, for this thing that's happening. But it really freaked me out to the point where there was a well, whole yeah, you know, you were, of you them were coming watching, after me. Knock on the door and <laughs> and watching, uh, watching Last of Us, definitely. Yeah, it was like uh, we killed one, and the whole herd came after us. Oh, you you'd have real nightmares like, if you watched that new series, Wolf Pack. That's what it was. It's like we killed one, and then all of a sudden, it was quiet, and we're looking out, and all of a sudden, it was like the whole field came alive, and a whole herd of them were coming after us, and it really freaked me out. I didn't like it. Huh. Yeah. So, Tessie, you haven't watched Wolf Pack yet, huh? No, I don't think so. What is that? I want to know. Uh, It's a new werewolf series that that has uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar in it. And it's about Mm. these kids. the, The first season takes place during uh, a huge fire and the town is being slowly burned away and you have these kids that had been you know they they were trying to evacuate them in a bus and the bus gets stopped and all of a sudden so the bus was gets Sarah attacked Michelle Geller, like the vampire killer uh, she was Buffy, yeah. In in yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, in this okay. one she's she's an FBI agent that is involved in this, and she's trying to figure out who started the fire. Right. And then it deals with uh, these four kids. And the thing is, uh, two of them are naturally born werewolves, and the other two were bitten. And the thing is that there's this big alpha wolf that is on, on the roam around the town, and this wolf is killing every kid that was involved with that with that bus and trying to Mm -hmm. trying to find its children which which are you know the two naturally born uh werewolves the thing is that years before when the kids were were pups uh this fireman found them and took them home, and they turned into babies. Aww. 
And so he raised these kids who who were in fact werewolves. And now these other kids, they have have because they were bitten, they have become part of the pack. Mm -hmm. The wolf pack. And so they are connected to the other two and the alpha wolf. And they're getting like powers and stuff. They're, they're getting fast healing and all kinds of different stuff. But the thing is that they're trying to stay away from this... Uh, you know, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller and her associate because, you know, it's dangerous and they're trying to stay away from the alpha wolf because, you know, he's just going around, you know, just killing people and stuff. And they suspect that he is the one that started the fire to... To, to bring out and his like, kids. It's okay. It's all natural. Don't worry about it. But it's not. Yeah. So. Mm. It's it's an interesting show. I've, I've watched the first four episodes. And I like it. It's based on a young adult novel. Hmm. Called Wolf Pack. So you trust it. Oh, y'all yeah, were just yeah. staring at me. Huh? I felt like y'all was just staring at me. Oh, no, 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 no. I just barely looked at you. Oh, you're fine. Don't feel judged. I just barely looked at you. But I, I, you know, some, I'm, I'm just fascinated tone. by this series because it takes place, the entire 10 episodes take place in one night. Uh, you know, during this fire. It's not fitting. So, anyways. Um, okay, so do you remember the whole uh, vampire series where there's the sparkly vampires and shit? Oh, God, Twilight, don't, don't, yes. don't, please. No, no, okay. not the Pat, not the Pattinson, yes. no. Twilight! No. <laughs> God, no. My sister forced me to watch every episode after the first movie. I went, to, you know, I was working at a movie theater and I saw the first Twilight for free <laughs> and just was like, oh, God, save me. So, you because, know, there's Twilight. <laughs> because just imagine this, Tessa. Twilight was written by a good little Mormon girl who had <gasps> never what? who had never read any Mormon girl. vampire Could read you no vampire novels read no you know didn't watch any vampire films or anything so all of a sudden she's writing a book on vampires and werewolves I'm a good little Mormon girl <laughs> No seriously so, Kristen Dunst, Dunst, whatever the fuck you want to call her, she's actually coming out with Queer Eye for the Paranormal Guy. So, they're starting a whole new series. Oh, and fuck I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not gay or anything like that. And neither is my sister. Kristen Dunst, right? Yes, Kristen oh, Dunst. My like, she shaved her God. head and she's sexy as fuck. And Ew. all this other shit, but yeah. Ew. They're looking for some sexy single individuals and um and she's like, Oh, we're coming from California to Arizona up to the Four Corners area and I'm like, Hey, here I am, blah 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 but my girl Mia, like, you need to talk to her and they've been talking and I guess it's been a good deal of shit. So some good things are happening on on that extent, but yeah. Good things are happening, which I'm glad because they deserve it. I feel like they deserve it. 
Um, what? Yeah. So, so, so they're doing the same thing like the paranormal sex squad. They're they're doing except that? that it's les except that it's lesbians now what and, is the paranormal and headed sex by squad? Ernst and Dunst. Yeah, with her head shaved and being oh, all sexy fuck. and shit. Uh, but what oh, is the paranormal God. sex squad? What is that? They were a paranormal group. They were all models and stuff, and they they did a very they did a pilot for a television show that failed. It didn't mm -hmm. get through through. Uh... But anyways, yeah, they 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 were they were well known in the paranormal circles. You you never heard of the paranormal sex squad? Nope. Or no, 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 not ter paranormal sex squad. No, that was my nickname for him was the paranormal sex squad. Paranormal hot squad. That's what it was called. You hot know that squad. one? Why was it why was it so hot? Because they were all models. Oh, okay. They well, were Kristen all Dunst sexy was as models. Well. Yeah, but she's the one that started it and, and it was like paranormal eye for the queer guy or whatever. Um, so it was like more of, you know, um, oh, people on God the gay side and like, oh, even God though I'm me. not gay and even though me is not gay, me is down there in the Phoenix area and she's so open. I'm so open. Like we love everybody because we both have gay siblings and, and everything else. So we're open to that. And I guess that Mia was able to help. And I hope she did because... God. I love what you're doing. Even though you're, like, quivering at the idea or whatnot about... Yeah, it, I'm, I'm, quiver, I'm quivering at the idea because it's, you know, what's it going to be? The paranormal woke squad? Give me a break. It's like, God damn... I feel like it's people that. Okay, I mean, we so got gay me, people who who are who are in paranormal anyways. I mean, I Chip know, Coffee's. I know. Chip Coffee's is as faggoty as can be. Wearing his his thing and being like, "Oh, girl, you better believe." Um, but and and if you're like, talking woke, I mean, shit, <coughs> you got paranormal hood, for Christ's sake, and you got the Ghost Brothers. I love the Ghost Brothers. And oh my god. Well, and and as I said, the Paranormal Hot Squad. They're still out there. Oh, god. They, they just oh, they just don't uh, they just don't uh, do much anymore. You know, uh they don't cuz you know, um even though we feel like we're at an age where everything should be open and equal, there's still a lot of fucking hatred out there. There's a lot of killings happening. Oh, there's all know. kinds of shit happening because people are like, oh, well, it's okay, but you're woke or this and this and that and that. You know what? We are woke and this is happening. And and um, even though we're accepting, not everybody is accepting. And so a lot of shit is happening these days. It ain't cool, it ain't fair, but we're still here. We're still queer. And it's all good. Like, I have kids that are like that. I have grandkids that are like that. Like, okay. It's That's all good. Fine. I love everybody equally. And I think that everybody has something to bring to the table. And I ain't going to be scared off by some queer individual. Like, give me a fucking break. Oh, no. I wasn't I wasn't talking about some queer individual. I'm just saying that it's going to, that it, that it's a publicity stunt and, and it's kind of in bad taste sitting there going. I don't think it is. Because this has been a long time coming. And then some people think it is a publicity stunt, but in reality, it's not. Well, I don't know. I'm, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, because it's just the time, you know. I mean, Tessa, have you actually looked at how the LGBTQ uh, community is now? The state of it? Um, 
I have not looked at the whole community. I've looked at since 1999 and therefore has happened. Um, like my brother, cousin's son, who who was like, um, why I'll, I'll, am I alive? Why is this happening? Et cetera, et cetera. It's because God made you that way. It's not because you decided to be that way. You I are understood. that way. What, I, what I'm saying is... Um, Honestly, Tessa, you need to, you know, I'll I'll send you a link to my friend Ariel's, um, uh, her her podcast, because she does a thing on LGBTQ, and the thing is that it's really fucked up. I mean, they're they're actually prejudiced on their own people. Well, yeah, and just they're like horribly. Um... The BTL, because, whatever, everybody is racist against everybody. And it's like, why are we doing this? Exactly. Just fucking quit. But but the thing is that, you know, you know, you're talking you're talking about uh LGBTQs basically sitting there telling uh lesbian women that they have to accept transsexual dicks or they're racist <clears throat> and it's well, like you know, it's, it's kind and of my friend hard ariel to accept said, a dick in your face you know <laughs> yeah and, and my and my friend ariel says excuse me that's why i'm lesbian is because i don't like dick and you're sitting there yeah. telling me that i'm that i'm this horrible fantastically horrible person because i don't want a transsexual dick in me, and that's well, that's yeah, so what... you don't need it in you or in your face or whatever, but it's still there. Yeah, it's no still matter there, how you but, color it. But that's that's what she that, that's one of the things she talks about is how now if you're if you're a regular gay person, you know, a gay man or a gay woman, you're treated like garbage. In the and it's LGBTQ. Hard because they have bathrooms that are stated as such and this and this and that and that. And yes, sometimes there's somebody standing there that's like, no, you don't belong here. I don't know. We need to take down these barriers. We need to be who we are. And yes, I do understand that there are people out there trying to take advantage of this and trying to be like, oh, well, I'm LGBTQ or whatever. When yeah, in well, fact, the they're just a child that's... molester or something, and they're just trying to get in there to take advantage of little children, that's where we need to lay down, you know, the circumference of, are oh, you really this or are you that. really that? But, but yeah, because people are trying to sneak through either way, but on the other hand, like, I'm open to this. I'm open to people being who they are generationally and yeah, sexually the, or the, whatnot. But the, but the problem is, is that people aren't being who they are and some of the some of the ones the are actually are. pushing pushing kids and basically telling them oh well you're you're lgbq when when they might not be and put making them okay. go through uh through surgery when they're when no. they can't even be you know they can't even really make that decision and then so saw, the thing is, um, later on, they're being they're, more and more, more and more. These kids are asking to come back from that because so I they saw don't... stasis like that, like you're talking about. So a friend of mine, I used to bartend with her and her daughter was like, I think I'm a boy when in fact she was a beautiful girl and um, she supported her for years. And she's like, yes, I'm going to do all these things for like um open gap like generational things as far as the bathrooms this and this and that and that and everything went good until all of a sudden she's like okay i no longer feel like i'm a boy now i'm a girl again um so she was there for that too it's very confusing for this person and we're not yes, trying to push it on them we're just letting them grow the way they should so she went from i'm a girl going to a boy and then she discovered that she's a girl again and, and she's the most beautiful girl, but she did what she could as a parent to 
um, push the gap for bathrooms and all this other shit for gender equality, etc. She did everything she fucking could for that. And then all of a sudden her daughter comes back from being a boy to being a girl. All good. Like whatever fucking happens, happens. You don't push it. Um, yeah, you and don't I've heard push horror, it. Yeah, I've heard horror stories where people are like, oh, let's, uh, let's snip it off. Let's do this. Let's do that. No, you never fucking do that. Exactly. You let them grow however they need to grow. And if they do grow that way, as an adult, let them make that decision later on. Just like my my son. He's got six fingers on his right hand. He's got two thumbs. Oh, interesting. As an adult, he can decide to clip that off. If not, cool. It's all up to him. The same thing with mm -hmm. gender equality. If you feel like you're a girl or a guy, whatever... If you want to snip it off or keep it or whatever, like as an yeah. adult, you can choose that. But as a kid, don't because it's too young to decide that. Yeah, exactly. You're still going and, through so much shit and growing. And yet, you know, you've got these teachers that are pushing, pushing this stuff, and they're and sitting doctors. there, and they're sitting there going, "Oh, well." You know, I you know I don't work for the parents, so I'm not <laughs> going to tell I'm not going to tell them anything. No, you know, you know, honestly, as I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a link to Ariel's uh, uh, stuff because you'll be it's it's eye opening. Yeah, seriously, but like even with doctors, like doctors were pushing me, and I'm like, hey. That's not my decision. That's up to my son. If my son decides to do that when he's an adult, that's cool. But yeah. as a kid, if I said, hey, let's do it right now, guess what? He's going to go through two or three or four different surgeries when he doesn't need to. I accept uh, him for who he is. Six. Yeah, basically. Because it keeps yeah, growing and growing surgery. and growing. He's got it coming off here. Oh, like okay, this. okay, for the for the for the thumb, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, how many different surgeries? It's like you can do it as a kid and be like, "Hey, that's what you get." Um, but it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing, and he's okay with it. His friends are okay with it, and they're like, "Oh, well, he's gonna be really bullied." Guess what? Kids are bullied for shit all the fucking time. Yeah, they are. Um, more likely than not, they're like, hey, that's fucking cool. You know, you can like Spider-Man or whatever else, you know, you got other shit going on. And well, with, cool me, with, with, with me, I'd be sitting there thinking about the, uh, Outer Limits episode, the sixth finger. Right. Don't, don't you never saw that one? Mm, I don't think so. Oh my God. With. David like McCallum, David McCallum in it. Uh, the thing is that there's this um, uh, scientist that he's doing experiments on on bringing you know genetically uh, bringing people forward to see how to see how uh, man evolves, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is he finds well his his assistant knows this guy who is extremely intelligent and the thing is it's a small um it's a small uh coal mining town so this oh, yeah. kid is extreme you know david mccallum's character is extremely intelligent and so the scientist does the experiment on him and starts evolving him and that he starts, you know, growing, uh, an extra finger on his hand. And the thing is, he also, his brain capacity goes up and he starts changing and becoming more intelligent. And he gets, like uh powers to levitate things and stuff mm -hmm. but the thing is that this guy on top of everything else 
he has this hatred for the town. And at one mm. point he decides he goes on a rampage through there to and destroy them. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he evolves even more and he loses that. And then he wants to uh, go forward even more. He wants to go to the point where he's evolved past his body and become pure thought. Nice. And he tries to push his girlfriend, who who is the, the assistant, to do that. And instead what she does is she pulls the thing backwards and brings him back to normal again. Well, back to, you know, his self. Interesting story, though. It's, it's one of the more unique uh, Outer Limits stories. And I actually... Yeah, like for me... I actually like, even have a doll, you know, in my in my collection that is David McCallum at from the Six Finger because he grow he grows you know an actual Six Finger. That there's actually a person that uh, wrote a symphony who had an extra finger. Yeah, yeah, I heard that about was that. Interesting too. Those are just different things I told my son, oh. but um, shit. Yeah, there's the a, part... there's a there's a guy who actually got himself shot in the war and lost the ability to use his one hand, and he was a concert pianist, and mm -hmm. uh, he actually composed music for one-handed so that if you have just one hand you can play music play these music pieces for one hand well i just know my son is perfectly happy and he's not really being judged for his extra finger like people are like wow that's pretty fucking cool and you know he could be a baseball star he could be a basketball star whatever in the future i don't know <sighs> he could just be a regular fucking individual really doesn't matter well, to me you know as long you, as he's fucking happy well i mean seriously i mean there there's people who have no legs that that walk around and that or people with no arms that they use their feet as you know for hands instead and they can mm -hmm. write and they can do all kinds of things with their feet you right. know it's people can do amazing things yes basically like don't draw attention to this because it really doesn't matter but yeah the doctors like at first were making such a huge deal about it i'm like shut the fuck up don't matter um but yeah, so, Jean, do you have anything to add? You look no. I'm just very content. Oh. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that subject. Because I'm one of those people, so I kind of just don't know what to say, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> tuck and roll, baby, just tuck and roll. <laughs> Well, you know, with with me, I've uh, I've been around a lot of sci-fi people, so you know, stuff like that don't bother me. And I just wish my dad was still alive because he's super sci-fi, and he'd be like, "Damn, baby, that's badass!" And you better take it for what it is, you know. Oh yeah, superstar like basketball star or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I just know he's amazing and he's got such a soft, loving heart. And he's so fragile. I love him. He's just like his boy. daughter? His mama. Yeah. He's a super fragile heart, super loving, everything else. And whatever he wants to do in the future, he's going to do. 
He's got the future in his hands. Oh, so, God. Uh, oh, Tessa, you so, want to hear hear the latest about uh, the ghosts in my house? Yes, I do. You oh, know it. Oh, God. Oh, God. My sister's ex-boyfriend, he, his, uh, his girlfriend died in my mother's room. Seriously? A few years ago. And the oh thing God. is, now he's, now he's gone. He's, well, he's not dead, but he's, he's moved off to another area to do, to work. Mm -hmm. And he and his girlfriend's stuff is still in the room. And, We've been hearing things. Uh oh. <laughs> We've been hearing things in the room. Sure, didn't uh, me. Uh, you know, the room is right over my sister's living room. So we keep hearing people walking up in there. And I noticed that the door has opened a crack you know no one's no one's going into that room but the door opened a crack and now now well a couple of new things have happened uh now when i when i go by there in the morning i hear hello hello Coming, coming through the door, <laughs> and I go, "Oh, hey, hi, hello? Vicky." I go, "Oh, hi, hey, Vicky. Vicky. How's it going, Vicky?" <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, she's dead, and now I'm I've been sitting here in the room, and it's been nice and comfortable in here. Now all of a sudden. On my bed, it is cold. It is freezing. I got icy like, chills. I like your company, going up but it's fucking cold. Back, yeah, exactly. And and it's like, God damn it, Vicky! You you know it's fucking winter. <laughs> I'm cold. You want to do it's this cold during enough. during during summertime? I'd be absolutely happy to have you freeze me. But right. now, now it's not because I've got these cold chills going up my back, and I know it's her because I mean, shit, you know, I'll be sitting here watching a television show or something, and all of a sudden, this cold chill hits me. Sorry, that so, was just my hubby coming in. <laughs> uh huh. So, anyways, that's that's the newest thing is that she's freezing me to death. Thank you, Vicky. I know it's not cold enough this winter. We have to yeah, have it's Vicky not cold enough. In. I'm, you know, I, <laughs> you know, we don't have a furnace in this place. I have to, I have to use a heater in my hallway because I don't want to hook it into my thing because it, it it hits you know it causes the fuse to go off right so i have to have the heater in my hallway with my door opened and then all of a sudden vicky comes in and freezes me to death if it's not her doing that it's, it's my me. niece it's my niece Going down Come and here. leaving the door open when it's 42 degrees out and freezing my part of the house. God. It's been insane this winter, and um, I knew it was going to be a bad winter because all of my eyes started rolling in, and I was catching one after the yeah. other after the other. I was the bestest little mouse killer ever. I was like, click, 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 click. Oh God! Don't don't even don't even talk to me about vermin. Yeah, and then all no, of a sudden my, it was my, dead silent. Like recently, I haven't been able to kill anything. Go ahead. 
My neighbor has three foot rats. You want you some know, on? Super, super fucking uh, Godzilla rats. And I'm not kidding Legend? here. What? You said you want to hear about mine? No, I said y'all want some of my rats. Y'all can have them. No, thank oh, no. you. I got, I'm I got good. big old, I got big old monster flipping rats that are crawling on on our on our fence, and then jumping into our neighbor's house yard. <laughs> and it's like, God damn it, Tim! You know, keep your rats on your side. Your big For monster real. rats. I know. Seven foot rats, rats, rats. It's like that um, song from whatever that thing was. Uh, seven foot rats, rats, rats. Blah, blah, blah. And the kids were like singing that song. I'm like, yeah, that's really funny. Except for the point where it came to where um, I, I quit killing the rats, a.k.a. mice. And nothing was happening. It was like nothing was happening. Then all of a sudden, I finally killed one. And I was like... Here little, here little mouse killer. Here's a little mouse. And he's like, ah! And he went very rabid over it, so I let him have it. As long as you get a taste of this mouse and you kill some other ones, that's cool. But it was like one after the other after the other. And then it was about a two-week span. We didn't get anything. Then all of a sudden we got one. And now, I don't know. It's just a different series of mice. I think they're more educated because... They're really not feeding into the mouse traps anymore. They're like, mm, I don't yeah, they're too I'll smart. Yeah, they're educated. I'm like, what the fuck kind of mouse is this? Oh uh, yes, still. Tessa, it is. It is I, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Well, believe it or not, even with this on my head. And that I'm still cold. I know it's because so it's oh, murder me, murder me, murder fucking me. Sorry. Co. I'm sorry. Oh no problem. Just ignore me. You, yeah, it's me, Emperor Palpatine. I know. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? I don't know. He He's speaking to the other series of mice that we're trying to kill. No. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So as far as it goes, for um, as far as you know, uh, oh, your series that you're doing, etc. Um, what do we want the people to watch? What What do we want the people to listen to, etc. You have a whole different series going on. All this other stuff going on. What series? Oh, you mean uh, my book series or what? Um, so oh, 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 okay. The Sweet um, Symphony of Death. Well, I got Symphony of Death. I've got, um, let me see, uh, Bloodbath Beyond Podcast, with, uh, which I'm doing. Yes. On my own since I since I fired Mr. Highland. I love it. Yes, and, fire the bastards, but keep going with your dream. Oh yes, uh, uh, and then I have Bloodbath Tales, which is what they are is their audio book uh, stuff, and you know me and Mr. Highland uh, we uh, play audio books and then we discuss them afterwards. Uh, on Tuesday, we're going to be recording our next uh, episode, which is uh, The Devil and Daniel Webster. So that'll be coming out next Saturday. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, Bloodbath Theater. I'm, I'm going to be showing... Uh, oh, you're going to love this, Tessa. The Werewolf and... The beast must die. So I'm doing Indeed. werewolf films. 
Oh, so as far as the devil thing goes, like, is it just like, you know, writing from things you've heard or is it from experiences? Like, oh, oh, you mean, um, you know, writing, writing the, uh, the agreement and, uh, Yay. pain, hunger, and hell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, no, no, not, it's. Basically, I've I've studied a bit on the story of Lucifer and stuff, and I always found it interesting. And so, you know, I always wanted, you know, because all these authors have done versions of hell, I wanted to uh, take a crack at it, see, you know, see what I could do in world world building and come up with ideas because you never, you know, none of these people have ever really uh, came up with ideas on why hell does what it does. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to figure out. The only thing as far as the stream, et cetera, that I've been able to figure out is for me and dealing with him, He's looking for brides, and he not only came for my mother, but he came for me and my sister. And that's one of the only times he shows himself, is to look for brides. Otherwise, he could give a fuck. But yeah, so, so, uh, what, oh, you, you saw Lucifer, huh? I did. Okay. Do you uh, what story? does he look like? He was the most beautiful person I'd ever seen. His hair was slicked back. He had the most gorgeous face. He had a bow tie on, and he was wearing a tuxedo. And oh, okay. I could, I could only see his face when he was lighting his cigar. And he lit a cigar, and that's when I could see this portion of him. Oh, interesting. He was indeed... The most beautiful person I had ever seen. Uh, what color was his hair? Black. Okay. And it was amazing to me because before that, um, before I even saw him, I had the dream of my bed tilting, 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 and I was sliding down, and it was like fire and brimstone. So I was sliding down, and the only thing that kept me from sliding in there was holding on to the bed frame. I hmm. could uh, smell the fire and brimstone, everything. And then um, that stopped and I looked up and I saw him in my doorway and he just stood there like so completely calm and, and perplexed or whatnot. And he wanted to speak to me and yeah, he, he just... Did he introduce himself as Lucifer or... No. He went like this. He lit his cigar. And when he did that, I could see what was going on here. So I could see his face, his hair, his bow tie of his tuxedo. Mm -hmm. And he was the most gorgeous person I had ever seen. But I okay. knew who it was. Even though I was only like seven years old at the time, I knew it was him. And I okay. said, God stands before me, Satan fall behind. Okay. I knew that, um, well, later on, I knew what my dad had said. And he said, well, your mom saw the same guy and she had a lengthy conversation with him, blah, blah, blah. But I said, God stands before me, Satan fall behind. So I didn't have to talk to him. But she had okay, a lengthy was, conversation was with him. Any, was anything, uh, was a deal struck or anything? She died. She died in order to keep us alive. Okay. <clears throat> but he came back to um, strike another deal. Okay. Which because I didn't more because more than likely you weren't dealing with Lucifer himself. Exactly, but you were... and that's what my husband said. But I'm like, when Lucifer is looking for brides, he will come himself. That's where he will show himself. As the most beautiful angel but otherwise you know it's something else but 
Yeah, my mom had seen him in the very same room. She actually talked to him in great detail and made a deal to... See, that's that's a mistake. Making a Faustian deal is not yeah. too cool. Yeah, she made a deal in order for us to survive. Mm-hmm. And so she died right down the road from where where I made... You know, my assumption with him. But yeah, I saw him and I said, God stands before me, Satan fall behind. Snap. Just like that. I didn't have to deal with him. Hmm. Um, Intriguing. But yeah, I got to see his beautiful face, his demeanor, everything. I knew it was him, even without him saying so. But my mom, she saw him and she talked to him because she's very inquisitive and... I think we're so gifted, our line, that he's intrigued with us and he wants us as brides. And he's not only come to me, but to my sister, etc. And then I've warned my kids about it. I'm like, if you ever see this guy, say God stands before me, Satan fall behind so you don't have to deal with him. And he hates that shit because he wants to strike a deal, but ain't going to let it be. Hmm. I'm going to let it end with me. Um, But my mom, she made the mistake of talking to him a great deal. And she saw the same thing. The most beautiful angel. The most beautiful person ever. He was so gorgeous. Like, so gorgeous. Hmm. You would want to talk to him further. But I was like, nope. Ain't going to be. God stands before me. Satan fall behind. And it was done. Yeah, because usually... On something like that, you would have a what's a crossroads demon, aka watcher demon. No, because it those was... are the demons that are only allowed on Earth. Okay, so if Satan is looking for a bride, is he going to send a demon to do his dirty work? No, he's going to come himself. And that's what he did with my mom. And that's what he did with me and my sister. And he got my mom. She had um, a lengthy conversation. Everything. And she ended up dying just two, two, I want to say meters, but just beyond the precipice where she talked to him at the crossroads. It was crazy. Okay, let me tell you this. So, the day my mother got into her accident, my sister saw a limousine off the side of the road, and she saw him standing there in his tuxedo like this, and he was just sitting there waiting to gather his fold. And it happened. She got hit by a drunk driver. She was taken, and he collected her. Mm -hmm. And then my sister ran... On a broken fucking hip to the um, the phone and she called us and she's like hey this and this and that happened and then she kind of let it dangle because she couldn't continue but he collected my mom and let her go but she said she saw a, a limousine and a man in a tuxedo standing there that never happens in Salem Springs Arkansas this is backwoods hillbilly motherfucking Arkansas, <laughs> you know? No, understood. Yeah, that shit never happens. And there it was. A limousine and a guy in his tuxedo looking all handsome as hell. And he collected that soul. And she's come up um, several times as far as my sister has had accidents. And she's come up in a jury poll. Like, she sees the whole jury thing happen. And my mom's like, Please let her let her live, let her live. And my sister has lived. I've never had that for me, but I know it's still there, but I don't know. I know I saw him and I denied him. Okay. I know it's been pretty intense. And I've seen mm-hmm. cobalts and um, people are like, Well, what is that? Well, they're the little minions of the devil. They look like um, gargoyles, or you can call them gremlins. Like, their ears are really pointed, 
and they're jumping around the fire and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. and they're um uh, sounds like furies to me. Yeah, bang on drums and you know yep. poking animals furies. and all this other shit. Furies? Yeah, furies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so somebody said they're cobalts and I looked it up and they're not cobalts. No, they're so furies. They look like little fucking gremlins. So they're furies. Yeah, they're furies. I actually did I actually did a picture of a fury. Do you have it? Uh yeah, I have I have a it's a um it's a sketch I did. Um uh, I used it for the poster for uh, when I did the Yattering and Jack. Hold on. <sighs> And oh. it was crazy because, like, I took my kids ow, up ow, to ow, see. Ow, 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 ooh, 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 oh, no, hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Ooh, I so got I took a... my kids up. Horrible. Um, oh, God. To ooh. the Pine Grove Cemetery to see my mom. And oh, it, was, it was really ooh. cool because my ooh. daughters, um, Come on. like my eldest daughters, they just Stop. went around and they cleaned up the graves. And they talked to these different dead people. And Hold on. Here because, we go. Um, as we were leaving, my son said, "Those little blue bastards, they ain't gonna get me," and that freaked me out because they kind of have this no blue wrong color one. But yeah, we were sitting there, we we're cleaning up the grave sites. I smoked <sighs> weed with my mom and all this other shit, and we're cleaning up grave sites. We're respecting the grave sites. And one of my daughters said, Mom, what does it mean ah. when somebody says, leave your sins outside the door? And I'm like, it means exactly that. Like, don't bring any sin inside this place. Leave your sins outside the door. That's exactly what it means. Um, but we did that. Okay. We cleaned up grave sites for our ancestors and everything. And then we left and we had this major anxiety precipice going on. And okay. it's kind of like what you're dealing with right now, where, like, you feel the pain, you feel like something's about to happen. And we did. Like, even though <sighs> my husband's driving and he's, like, the grandpa driver, he's the safest driver in the world. We felt like we were going to die. And um, my son, as we were heading down the road, said, if those little green bastards come, I'm going to kick them right in the balls. And he was talking about the the little gremlin fuckers. Hmm. What did you call So them? they were green, huh? The Furies. The Furies. They can be green. They can be blue. It depends on what light is shown on them. Uh, hold on a moment. Ow, 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 ow. Mm. Yeah, roll over. Rub it out. Rub it out. I got a really... Oh, God. Oh. Uh... You might have to stand up, too. Yeah, I'm going to have to... Ooh, that hurts. Nothing. Okay. No, but and seriously, like, um, for me, they just look like kind of reptilian skin. They have big ears like gremlins. They could be green. They could be blue. It just depends on how the light reflected on them. You uh -huh. can't really tell their color. Uh... Okay, let me see. Where the f And what did you call them again? Because I need to write that down. Furies. Furies. Instead of fairies, they're furies. Yeah, they're furies. And those are subject to, like, Arkansas and Kentucky and places like that? No, they're from all over the place. They, they are Lucifer's children. They're, they're like his little minions, right? Yeah, they're small little demons. They were like, yeah, 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 yeah. And in like, fact, some of them, uh, some of them drums, have some of, some them, of them have wings. Spears. Really? Because I saw the ones that were like banging on drums. Some of them like doing this there with you like, go. little spears, and they're dancing around. And then all of a sudden, like all at once, they shot. They stopped. Oh yeah. And then they scurried over to my window. And guess what? I used the shield of sheets. So I laid back on my bed and I pulled the sheet up 
and I could see them on my wall, and I could hear them okay, screaming I at just my wall. Sent, I just sent you the 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 piece that I made. And they were looking through my window, and they were chattering back and forth, and then they let go, and I think they went to my brother's room. And after that, they hunted him until they actually captured him. And I'm telling you, brother, my grandparents allowed him to be captured. And I'm very disappointed at that. I can't believe they allowed that. But I'm like, okay, so they're looking for sleep. And they're like, hey, let's just let it happen. And they allowed my brother to be captured. And ever since then, he's been in trouble. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Anyways, I sent I I sent it to your messenger. I'm sorry you're hurting. God. Ooh. He's been sitting here for a long time. Yeah, yeah not and... too long, but I get it. And we're on the uh precipice of something, so I, I totally get it too, but <sighs> furious. And my son even saw it, and that really creeped us out because we did all of our cemetery work. We've taken care of the dead, etc., etc. And we're going down the hill, and he's like, If those blue motherfuckers come after me, I'm going to kick them right in the balls. And we're like, What the fuck did you just say? I'm like, he didn't even know. But he was saying, If those blue motherfuckers come after me, I'm going to kick them right off in the balls. And I'm like, Holy shit. He's seen okay. them too. So, anyways, that to yeah, me blew my mind. Well, anyways, as I said, it's sitting there for you. Well, thank you, to, brother. To look at. Well, if you want, um, we can end it here, or we can go a little bit longer. Just so okay. You know, I here. yeah, I think I'm pretty much finished for the night. I'm gonna have to put some cream on my leg. Uh, my ankle is cramping i don't know why i'm not i'm not you know i've been sitting normally mm -hmm. you know Maybe since after the about. podcast and it just started my leg in oh you mean Could? them trying to warn me yep because you're 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 hitting on a certain subject oh i'm i'm tapping a nerve problem is they, can't, they shouldn't be able to get me here my my room's warded yeah you wouldn't think so but sometimes there's a crack in the protection yeah well all i know is that i've got it warded and uh shouldn't shouldn't be a problem of course, Vicky's been coming in here too, so who knows? Right, and she's a bit dark, right? No. Well, just a little bit nuts, but not not dark. Right, just try to reward yourself because um, whether we're depressed or other things going on, we need to kind of reward ourselves as far as like re-register like our blessings and stuff like that going on around us. I don't know you'll hear me being weird. Hmm. Oh, it's and just now he's scratching his back. I wish I could find my back scratcher. I use my vitamin case. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I can't yeah. find my back scratcher. So I use my vitamin case. I'm like, oh, there we go. That's the right spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got, <clears throat> I've got dermatitis on my spine. And oh, the thing is that usually in the evenings it gets really uh, irritated. So I'm going to have to, uh, you know, put some more cream on my back. But mm -hmm. I actually use the back scratcher, the back of the back scratcher to get the, get the cream on there. Right. I know that's what I do too, but guess what? My back scratcher went missing. So I've just been using my vitamin case, which is mm. very ghetto. 
Yeah, I know. I got I got these back scratchers. I got two of them. I got uh, got them at an Asian store years ago, and they've been sitting. You know, they I've been using them ever since. And you know, yeah, there's a there's a classic uh, Asian back scratchers with the the flowers uh, on them and stuff. Actually, the flowers mm -hmm. have worn off on them. I've been busy. So, you yeah. know. Well, mine's lost somewhere in the abyss. Hmm. But anyways, I just want to um, thank you once again for being on the show this evening and um, talking about these different things. And let me yeah. know they're not cobalts or um, little minions. They're called furies, which yeah. totally makes sense to me. Yeah, they're called furies. They're the things that uh, the devil sends into our realm to cause mischief. A lot yes. of the polter, a lot of the poltergeist uh, experiences are caused by minion. Well, by furies. Yeah. And it was because, crazy because, like, um, like I said, my brother was caught by them. Like, they ran through the house chasing my brother, and they came back through, and my grandparents captured my brother. I almost said my son, because he's kind of like my son. But my little brother, they captured him, and they held him until the little fucking furies got him. And then ever since then, he's been in trouble. Yeah. And it... It totally um, makes sense to me. Like, he is good-hearted, but he has that little darkness within him. Hmm. Uh, one thing to know is that the Furies uh, escaped hell. They did. And the thing is that, yeah, they escaped hell to get away from Lucifer. Did you hear about um, the Kentucky Cobalts? Yes. They they look the same except for they have glowing eyes. They look exactly the same as the things I saw except for they have the glowing eyes. So are those the same things? Are those actually furies and not not what they it, said they were the Kentucky Cobalts? They keep, they keep calling them cobalts, but in I fact know, what I the, hate that. What they are is, you know, those those things They're furies, right? No. Those are trolls. Really? Yeah, those are trolls. They they are uh, creatures that came that God experimented on, and the thing is that they are creatures that Lucifer sent into our realm uh, from purgatory. Okay, so what I saw are those. Trolls and they, or are those furies? Because they were like I think, going I around think, the fire. They're chanting. Some of them might be it might drums. be trolls. Might be trolls because and then uh, they ran over and screwed up you're, my you're window. Say, you're saying that they looked exactly like the kobolds, right? They look like gremlins. Like they have the long pointed ears. They have reptilian skin. They have the little fucking gremlin face. Okay, that's trolls. Trolls? Seriously? Trolls. What the yeah. Fuck? Yeah, those are fey trolls. So they're not. They're not no. what you said they were. No, they're not. So what's the difference between trolls and what you said they were before? Uh, furies are hellspawn. Trolls are not hellspawn. Trolls are fey. There's so a what's difference. the difference, though? Uh, fey are fey are like the leprechauns, the the fairies. Yeah, I've seen the little people. Yes. Yeah, the little. Yeah, they're they're related to the little people, but okay. they're but they're nasty little people. Yeah. They're nasty little people. They like to live under under bridges and stuff, and they like to live in forests, and they like to stay away from people as much as possible. But once yeah. in a while, they'll come in and 
cause mischief. They're mischief makers. So what about the ones with the uh, gremlin ears and the gremlin looking face? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's a troll. That is a troll. And they're the ones that were like, and then all of a sudden stop. And then they ran and screwed up my window and then they chased my brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because because once you Fucking mentioned trolls. about when you mentioned about those, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, there you have a troll problem. Yep. You got a fey problem. That's what you got is you got a fey problem. Uh Okay, the fey... it's a troll problem or a fey tr- uh okay, Both. so because trolls um, are fey. Yeah. Trolls are fey. Fey are. Yeah, these look like motherfucking gremlins. Okay, it looks the same yeah. except for their ears are a little shorter than you see on the movie Gremlins. Yeah. yeah. They have the yeah. same fucking gremlin face, everything else, yep. the same gremlin skin. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. <sighs> Trolls. And I heard them scratching up the wall. I saw their shadows. I was hiding under my sheet. And they yep. didn't go for me. They went for my little brother, and he's been paying well, I for mean, it I mean, for the rest t- of his t- life, which makes me feel really guilty. Yeah, when, once you started mentioning about the uh, lizard skin, yep, trolls. Yeah, because they did. They had that uh, lizard skin. They didn't have a tail. It was kind of like little nubby skin. Yeah, there's a, like, it has a little nub on the back. Little nubbin, yeah. Yeah, a little nubbin. Yeah, and they chased my brother all throughout the house and my grandparents, I swear to God, they would sleep Mm -hmm. every night, but they caught my brother and they allowed these trolls to capture him. And then after that, all was peaceful throughout the house. Everybody could sleep every night after that. Okay. Yeah, I'm still pissed off about that. Yeah, well, you need to uh, study up on trolls and find out what you can what you can do to uh, allay them because there's well, certain me, things like i'm okay as far as like i don't think it's followed me here except for my daughter seems a little demonic <laughs> but um but i think it's very well isn't much... isn't she teenager no not yet she's about preteen um, seven yeah she's seven years old Oh, okay. Um, uh, no, and pre-teen. she's very angry. But my brother, um, he's still dealing with this shit. He's still homeless. He still has no reclamation. So that for me is very hardcore. Okay. Yeah. And I think it yeah, has so... a lot to do with that. Uh. Those it's things, like he was those, a good-hearted person, but he can't do good past that. If those things come back, and I'm just telling you, if those things come back, uh, throw rice around the perimeter of the house. Okay. You want to know um, why? You want to know why? That- yeah, because it'll sure. drive them nuts. The they'll they one thing with uh, that's the same thing between uh, trolls and leprechauns is that they have to count every every grain of rice, <laughs> every grain of rice, and it'll piss them off, and they'll leave you alone. Because they won't want to have to deal with that. They'll know that they have, you know, that you have them. So they'd have to go around the house counting every fucking piece of rice. Hell yes. Now that I know that, I'm going to throw all kinds out. But no. Uh, um, another even... another thing that you use is you put uh, goofa dust around the, the house. What is that? For protection. Oh, it's an it's an ancient uh, thing done by uh, voodoo people. It's it's this stuff that they use. It's like uh, putting salt around a house, but it's called goofa dust. What? 
what is Goofa dust? Well, you don't, we, you have to get it from a, a mamba. Oh, well, good luck with that. Yeah, you have to go. Well, no, you you can find them, you know, if you go, get online and ask them. Uh, well, I know to give, you, to give you a bag of goofa dust. I will have to ask him. But yeah, it was crazy because back in the day when um, my husband's dad died, the only other time that these uh, little gremlin things were seen or goblins or whatever the fuck you want to call them goblins yeah was around the time he died and they were like chanting and there's little sparklies and you know kind of fairy dust going around she's like holy shit and she's seeing all this and see like, oh, i told you i told you and you said sparklies and stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and she's like because I saw you know what the sparklies and I saw are these little goblins yeah the you magic know what the sparklies were uh-uh but -uh. Fairies. Fairies, okay. Yeah, because fairies hang around with them. So you see those little light things? That's fairies. Well, she saw these furies, and then she saw the sparkly fairy dust mm -hmm. shit going on. And mm -hmm. that's the same night that her grandpa died. Okay, well, that's, that's them and so fairies working. So it's funny working. because... That's the Evans side and the Peterson side coming together. Kind of weird. Hmm. So is it like because it was a Peterson thing or is it because it was an Evans thing too? Don't know. You'd have to find out. You'd have to figure it out. Gonna have to figure it out. Because possibly somebody, somebody pissed off a gremlin. Uh, well, you um, know, I pissed uh, off uh, the devil because I said God stands before me, Satan fall behind. Get the fuck out. No, 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 no. That that wouldn't that wouldn't matter because they don't associate with Lucifer. They of are they are their own. They are their own little pack of and annoyances. I'm Irish, Welsh, yeah. Maybe okay. they me. I don't know. And. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. That's another <laughs> thing. That's another thing you could do to. No, no, no. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that though. No, that would that would cause them to stay. Because mm. yeah, you really do Maybe not I've want. Already caused them to stay. You but don't want to leave out a bowl of cream. No. <laughs> Yeah, you really to don't want to leave out a bowl of cream because a bowl of cream, you know, they, you you leave out a bowl of cream, they're not leaving. Because they love I cream. Leave out a bowl of cream, Jen's going to show up and she's never going to go away. No, I'm just telling you. <laughs> That's the truth. I just no, thought just about teasing. that. <clears throat> so, so, Tessa, you didn't know about the bowl of cream either? Okay, so... Um, we had a case years ago where there was a fairy fury as far as like the fairies were very fucking pissed off. And it was um, a little girl that was a lineage to the fairies. Okay. And um, <sighs> so they were doing different things like they cut down the grass, they did all these other things and it pissed off the fairies. So bookshelves and dressers and all this shit was being toppled over and they mowed down this different garden shit. And so come to find out due to different people in my group that knew about fairies because me, even though I'm Irish and Welsh and all this other shit, I had no idea about fairies. Did you but plant they, a tree? They said plant some flowers and other things and yeah. put out a dish with cream or mm -hmm. milk and some honey and toast and all this other shit. Yes. To pacify the fairies. And yes. that's when I first learned about fairies and what they like and need. Yes, indeed. See, I you know, I, I know a little See, bit about this. That's stuff. why I like the fact that my group is so diverse for Four Corners Paranormal Investigations. I'm like, I didn't know about that shit. 
even though I'm Irish and Welsh, you know, I was raised Mormon and I don't know about this shit. These other people were like, yes, pacify them with honey and um, butter and and toast and all this other shit. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, and plant them. The, pro- the, the problem is, is with trolls. If you do that, they'll uh, they'll stay. Yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah, because they're they're obnoxious little turds. And that's what I was wondering too, because. You know, fairies, I know they're pretty hardcore, but what about the toppling over of bookshelves and dressers and shit? Is that a fairy thing, or is that a troll thing? That's a fury thing. Fury. Because it seemed pretty furious to me. It's like, fairies yeah. can really fucking do that? And then they're oh, no, no. Like, drawing I mean, yeah, insignias yeah, they on the could. fucking roof and shit? Yeah, but they could, but they wouldn't do something like that. That's more of a fury thing. That's what I'm saying. That's not fairies. That's too no. furious. That's a fury. That's a fury. That's a mm-hmm. fury. Because as I said, you're even though uh, okay. So this little girl, girl I think was fairy. Yeah, your polter, your poltergeist stuff. That is furies. Mm-hmm. Just remember that. That is furies that are doing yes, that. Yes, for sure. Because they love to do shit like that. They enjoy stuff like that. That is their big thing. They like knocking on walls. They like knocking, knocking over off. stuff. Yeah. And then there was the drawings on the ceiling. I'm like, okay, so knocking over of these bookshelves and dressers and shit like that. They wrote they wrote stuff on the walls? Yes. Uh but you know what I think it was? I think it was the little girl. Okay, because I'm wondering about that. Was was it symbols? Was it you know? Mm-hmm. Symbols. It was, it was symbols. Okay. And I think it was My, a little girl, and but, I think she was told um, to do it. But the knocking over her dressers and shit was a fury. Um. And I know the fairies were there. The fairies you were pissed need off. To, you need to find out if it was Enochian. How do you do that? Uh, there's a few things that tell tell you about Enochian, and they have a few of uh, the symbols that are f- from Enochian. Because you, you know, know what like, you know what Enochian is, it right? It was like a pyramid shape, a triangle shape. Okay. Yeah, so, so, sounds like sounds like a Nokian. Okay. Uh, either that or counter Nokian, which is the demonic uh, writing. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, so after, it went from Fae to Nokian. Fucking great. Yeah, but it that triangle thing sounds like it's uh, either a Nokian or counter Nokian. The problem is the counter Nokian, as I said, is the uh, written language of hell. Right. Because when oh, Lucifer... Yeah, got a lot of that going on. When Lucifer a uh, little, little while after he went to got to hell, he decided that they would have to <laughs> that they would have to uh, that the, that everything was going to be reversed. You know, how, how the how the demons are very reversed. So yeah. what they did is they took the symbology and letters uh, of Enochian and they reversed them. So reverse Reno- uh, Enochian is hell. Mm-hmm. Enochian. It's the it's the reverse Enochian because Enochian yes. is the is the written language of heaven. Mm-hmm. It's the angelic language. No, you see totally what I makes mean? Sense. Yeah. So, anyways, just just letting you know on that. And yeah, yeah, I've picked this up over the years. You know, as I said, I'm just a petty dabbler, but you know, you you pick up shit. 
Okay, so as far as it goes, me as a kid, I've always had sleep issues. Then that one night, I had the dream, and my bed's tilting, tilting, tilting into a bed of fucking fire. Okay. And then I wake up and I'm like, that's the most fucked up dream. Yeah, sounds and I like look it. Over, and there's the most beautiful fucking person in my fucking doorway. And he puts this thing up to his face, lights it up, and then I could see his face and what he's wearing. Yeah, I'm still not too sure about that. I think what you saw was a uh, was a crossroads demon. Because so. hell, you know, because, because who would Lucifer, come for a bride except for Lucifer? Uh, uh, so Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer generally... does not go through because there's he has Lucifer, he has an understanding. He only shows up when he's looking for a bride. He wouldn't send anybody else to look for a bride. He needs to show himself. I don't know. And I know. know that's who it was. I know it was him. Because once I saw him, I said, God stands before me, Satan fall behind. Yeah, well, and that's... And even my mom said... That's one of the rules, him. is that they have to back off if you say anything like that. Um, yeah, and I told my dad the about thing this. Is, okay, the so thing we... is, what you have to realize, Tessa, is that Lucifer's, uh, the crossroads demons, <clears throat> they're cherubim. They're the okay, same. If you're the looking same... for a bride, you're going to come yourself. And my dad, I didn't even tell them him this until years later. And we're telling ghost stories. And this was one of mine. And he's like, holy shit. Your mom told the same story. Except for hers was very lengthy. Because my mom was a chatterbox. And she decided to talk to him for a long fucking time. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm just I'm just telling you what, I, what I've uh, figured. You know, for, for the longest time. Because of uh, the rules of hell. Yeah, and I've listened to this from my husband. He's like, Satan ain't going to send himself for this and this and that and that. I'm like, Satan is going to send himself when he's looking for a bride. He ain't going to send no willy-nilly fucking demon. He's going to send himself to show himself uh, before his bride. He's not going to be like, oh, here, watchers, little fucking demon, go find my bride for me. Like he's gonna the do watchers it are not are not willy nilly demons. Yeah, the thing are. is, they I've known are watchers. His... I've seen watchers. I've had watchers in my life. I know what watchers are, and I know what Lucifer is. Okay, well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying too. You know, seriously, I mean... I've seen watchers. I've been aware of all these fucking entities around me in this world and lucifer has not been there for a, a big amount of it he's been there for a small percentage of it and it's when he's looking for a bride and he's done that with me and my sister and my mother and i've warned my kids about it my daughters okay and i'm like just know this is what he looks like. He's super fucking gorgeous. He's the most beautiful angel. And he will tell you anything you want to know. But this is him. And he is. He's like like this. He'll light he'll light his shit. It'll it'll show his face. It'll show what he's wearing. He's wearing a fuck tuxedo. I don't know. To me, it was just very intense. And mm -hmm. I knew. I knew who it was, even though I was only seven years old. Here I am, 44 years old, telling you about this. I was only seven years old when I saw this guy. And I knew who the fuck he was. How did I know? I don't know. My heart and soul told me. Nobody taught me this. Nobody told me this. I just okay. 
Anyways, I got I got to get get to bed. Actually, well, I love you, brother, and I appreciate that you came. I feel on the like show she's tonight, staring and... a hole in me. Huh? I feel me? like she's staring a hole in me. <laughs> me? Wonderful. <Huh? laughs> um. Yeah, because well, because the last two it's days okay. I have been up early. You know, with with my writing, I'm usually up until four o'clock in the morning, yes. and I usually get up at ten. Mm -hmm. Last couple of days, my sisters had me waking up at seven thirty because she had a credit card that she ordered, put in a rush, and oh, so shit. it was going to be coming by overnight. You know, within a couple days, and mm -hmm. so the first first day I was sitting there, and you know, seven thirty, waiting, 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 nothing, and then uh, Friday, the damn thing showed up. Damn. Are, so no, finally, no, did show can, up. I, oh no! It showed up today. Today, yeah, Friday, it showed up, and just ah, oh, God, and I just haven't had any sleep. I know it's been relentless. Like I've been trying to sleep in, and I've been having these crazy, like, visionary dreams, and yeah. I don't know if you know about that, but I'm not going to keep you up with that. I'm going to let you go to sleep with this other <sighs> shit. But thank you for coming on the show. And No problem. Um, I, you know, as I said, I, I wanted to make sure I got it done. You know, even, even though half the show, you know, we kept hearing echo, echo, echo. Oh, uh, I don't think it was half the show. I think it was the first part. But yeah, we got it figured out. Yeah, which was which was the part where I had all my important stuff in. Oh God! Oh no! Well, that just means we have to do it again. Yeah, sometime. Damn, all right. Shit. Huh? Well, night and night, love and life. I keep breaking stuff. Oh, okay. Quit breaking stuff. I break you. <laughs> night, night, love and night, brother. Alrighty, I'm heading Bye. to bed. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.